Hello everyone, welcome back to the Captain Logan Show. It's me, Captain Logan, and joining me as always is my wonderful chat moderator and dance partner, DJ Martinez. I'm always here to dance, sir. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> what are you here for? I'm here for dancing. Speaking of dance, uh, that's why I'm so late tonight, and I want to apologize to everybody for the tardiness. Uh, I know that I very often have difficulty getting here right on time. I, it's the uh, curse of having uh, a large family and uh, five children. It seems like something always comes up right as I'm about to sit down. Uh, somebody needs something. But tonight, Jason started, uh, he's been off from dance for a month, and the fall semester just started, and uh, his new pickup time is half an hour before this show starts starts and I have 20 minutes to get back home and they like to keep them late so uh, it's gonna be difficult to make the seven o'clock time Every time I was going to see if I could rush it and make it work tonight, and I couldn't get here right on time. So uh, we're probably going to start Thursday's show a little bit later, 10 or 15 minutes after 7 because of that. So nobody panic. We're not going to drop it back to 8 like we did before uh, because I really like the 7 o'clock start time. It's easier for DJ to do these longer two-hour shows, uh, which they, they've uh, they've tended to be that long lately. And uh, because I don't want to have DJ a different time on Tuesday than, than Thursday. <laughs> Yeah, consistency is what we're all about here on this show. Sure. We'll, we'll keep running with that. Yeah, consistency and quality. <laughs> we're trying to maintain quality over quantity. But the important thing is that we show up twice a week. Yeah, just wait till the Zaslav plan falls through and then we switch over to quantity and then we just have five shows a week all at different times. And oh, no quality man. control. Yeah, but we have a 10-year plan. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, trust us. Well, anyway, uh, how's everybody doing? It's uh, Thursday. It's time for another exciting Captain Logan show. Today was Disney Plus Day, and I checked in uh, a couple times throughout the day to see what exciting announcements might be happening, and I don't think for my purposes there's a ton to talk about with that. If there's anything that uh, has happened that people really want me to weigh in on, uh, feel free to leave a uh, question or super chat and uh, I'll try to weigh in on a couple of things here and there. Uh, D23 is this weekend and Disney's probably going to make all their major announcements then so uh, DJ, I assume we'll have a pretty hefty show Tuesday wow. announcement wise. Yeah. So instead of, so I know that there were uh, a couple of uh, like trailers or sneak peek things. I think there was like a nine minute thing for Andor that I didn't get a chance to watch. Uh, I've been preparing for a writing meeting for tomorrow so I wasn't able to sit down and watch anything. Uh, I just looked look to see what the announcements were, and a lot of it was, uh, hey, there's a new Simpsons short. Uh, I, and, and those have been, I have looked dreadful, and I don't <laughs> want to watch them, uh, where it's always like mashups with uh, Disney characters or Marvel characters. I guess this one is Lisa wants to be a Disney princess. Uh, yeah, God. you don't want to watch the Simpsons Welcome to the Club? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> That's the short that dropped today. Oh, is that what it's called? See, yeah, I haven't so. actually logged on to Disney Plus on Disney Plus Day. I haven't looked at any streaming services today. Yeah, I've got it opened up. I can I can let you know some of the things, but I'm sure people bring them up. Uh, there's a Cars show. Yeah, they're they're doing a series of shorts. I saw that, but I don't know nothing super earth shattering. You know, if Matt Groening wasn't still alive, I'd say he was rolling in his grave, <laughs> spinning in his urn. Tonight, we've got a super chat goal, uh, DJ. I've been threatening for a long time to bring back the 24-hour stream, and if we hit $125 tonight in super chats, I'll do it at the end of this month. We'll do a 24-hour uh, stream, probably a big uh, uh, Captain Logan show, probably just this show, but mostly Q&A. Uh, DJ, no pressure. You don't have to be there for any amount of time if you don't have time, or you can pop in for an hour or two, or you know, check in throughout the day, whatever you want to do. I didn't even tell you about this, but it's been a thing I've been wanting to do for a while. Yeah. And I, I mentioned it to my wife uh, just before the stream, uh, asked if we had uh, that weekend open, and she said we did. So uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that if we hit the Super Chat goal. If not, I'll save it off. Uh, I've got a lot going on this month, but I thought, you know what, I'll tack it on. I'll squeeze it in um, if uh, folks want to support the show and make that happen. So uh, I'm, I'm always trying to come up with kind of fun incentives for uh, crazy Super Chat goals. So that's what we're doing this evening. Uh, if you're not inclined to help that happen, no pressure. Thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for watching. Uh, this, is me not, this is not me begging for Super Chats, I'm just trying to mix it up and keep the show kind of fun and crazy. So uh, if you want that to happen, uh, that's how you can uh, help. Just leave a Super Chat in any dollar amount that guarantees that your question, concern, topic, idea, uh, rambling, hey, I can 
uh, certainly relate to rambling, is addressed, and uh, we really appreciate everybody who has done, ever will do that. If we get zero Super Chat uh, money at all tonight, you guys just rock hanging out with us, and uh, we really, really love doing the show. Uh, maybe someday I'll do a goal for zero dollars in Super Chats. Uh, if we don't get any money, here's what we won't do. I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or here's what we will do. You don't want to see that. So anyway, uh, if you don't want to leave a super chat, but you would like to participate in the show, you can leave a question in the regular comments without a super chat, and we will get to as many of those throughout the show as possible as well. Uh, the best way for DJ to see those is if you tag him, and the modern way to do that on the internet is with an at symbol, and you can tag DJ at DJ Martinez at the welder or at O'Tannenbaum. I should have saved that for Christmas. Uh, DJ will <laughs> respond to any of those things and more. Sometimes I like to come up with the most ridiculous one to see if anybody actually says it in the comments. So, I, like, like I'm waiting. I hope so. This they hasn't happened yet. I'm waiting now for, I'm going to be waiting the whole show for at O'Tannenbaum. <laughs> I also respond to Good King Wenceslas. <laughs> I dare you to spell it. I dare you to try to spell it. Tonight's leading topic is uh, not Disney Plus Day. And again, if uh, folks want to uh, chat about that as we go along, uh, and I, I might pull the article up a little bit later and uh, go through a few of the, the, the offerings there. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about streaming services in general. Once again, kind of check in a little bit. This seems to be a uh, kind of major ongoing uh, crusade, or I shouldn't say crusade, uh, but but uh, but kind of adventure for us, DJ, uh, because it's always changing, it's always morphing, and it's always fascinating to see uh, what is happening and what might be happening with the streaming phenomenon, uh, because when I was growing up, um, it, it goes without saying, but we didn't have all of this constant switching of formats and stuff uh you had uh, and, and more so than my parents generation but i mean you know you had your uh you had a bunch of channels you had your major cable networks and you had your uh you're still your three you know uh major original tv networks and uh that was about it and we we would we would kind of freak out about how uh, complicated things were at that point where you know you could you could watch like 120 channels and we couldn't have imagined where things were going to go with the internet and youtube and then netflix and then uh the explosion of streaming services but like where we're at now with um the uh with what is the word I'm looking for right now? But platforms is uh, every few months there's just some kind of, or, or at least a year, there's some kind of seismic shift where I'm starting to wonder, DJ, if, if this ever settles. Like, I feel like the the, yeah. the, uh, the internet in general, but especially the, the, uh, the, the streaming landscape is just a series of constantly moving tectonic plates. It's not a question of whether the fault line is going to shift and there's going to be an earthquake. Uh, it's There's always an earthquake but usually it's sitting around like, I don't know, 1.5 in the Richter scale, but every few months we jump up to like a 9 and 9.5, right? Is it going to be like this forever? Are we ever going to get to a point where it settles, where it solidifies, where you can go, look, these are the main three or four streamers, and they're not going to keep, uh, uh, you know, jerking the prices around, and they're, I mean, you could say, like, there's always, um, like like, price fluctuation when it comes to, um, I, I like like cable TV and stuff like that. But like, is is it ever gonna kind of uh, you know get to a even line with pricing? Are we ever gonna get to a place where uh, the streaming services aren't streaming services aren't constantly splintering or uh, or, or merging? Uh, it's just it's it's always different. You never know what you're gonna be able to subscribe to. We gotta stop getting comfortable. This is what I'm learning, DJ. Like, I don't mean to be cynical. I don't mean, mean to be negative. We have to stop getting excited when these things go our way because it ain't, it just ain't going to stay there. Yeah, you heard him. You heard the cap. Stop being happy. <laughs> Life is not, you know, sunshine and rainbow. Just don't expect your happiness to continue, right? Um, <laughs> Like, we, we got to a really nice place uh, a couple of years ago with when, when Disney Plus and HBO Max uh, were announced and, and, uh, and started coming out. I guess they, they, they were kind of at slightly different times. And uh, 
they were, uh, like, regardless of my issues with, with Disney Plus and the way Disney does business, and uh, they're, I'm hearing more and more about their, like, putting movies out and, uh, like, changing effects and cutting scenes and censoring stuff and all of that. But as far as just offerings go and the things functioning, I'm looking at you, Paramount Plus. Uh, they, they've they been uh, the the best streaming services, I think, um, as far as the, the big major he heavy hitters, not looking at your criterions and things like that, um, but the major ones, you know, and they've been, they've kind of been the, the new big two, I would argue, uh, since Netflix's kind of epic decline uh, after, I uh, you know, their, um, sorry, DJ is distracting me because he's coughing even though I can't hear it. Um, but I, you know, after the- Turn my lost, camera off too. I, <laughs> after they lost a whole lot of uh, market share and their uh, their stocks plummeted and uh, a, a lot of uh, companies have uh, kind of taken material off their platform and all of that. And so, yeah, things are changing massively, and HBO Max is not going to be HBO Max next year. And Disney is uh, raising prices, both for Disney and Hulu, and Netflix is raising, j just raised prices recently. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the articles real quick, and then we'll do any kind of speculating we think we can at all. So this comes from uh, AOL.com. This is from uh, AOL. Is AOL still even a thing? What? Uh, se September... 8th. Uh, so this was just uh, today, in fact. And uh, I, I thought that this was an old article, but this just came out. Um, who oh, yeah. Disney Plus? It's, it's AOL, man. It's on the, it's, it's hit. It's on the cutting edge. <laughs> Uh, who, as I just said, Hulu and Disney Plus are about to increase their prices. You know, uh, when, when you get one of these remotes for like a smart TV or for a... Oh, it's uh, the worst. They never have what you a, need. Don't, or a don't fire even, stick. <laughs> don't whatever. even waste my space on my remote because you never have the right ones. There's always like a weird one, right? They're outdated immediately. <laughs> yeah. There's I still one have one. I never use. Yeah, I still have one that has the Blockbuster app on it. <laughs> Not, not that I'm using it, but I still have a remote that has that. I want to keep it just because it's so outdated. Wow, where does that button even take you now? <laughs> I, I doubt it does anything. I wonder if you could toggle it to take you somewhere. But anyway. Yeah, they, you sh they should just make customizable buttons and, and sell little stickers that you can put on there. That'd be great. Uh, Hulu is increasing prices for both tiers. This uh, Now, this information actually came out a few days ago, and I was going to bring up on the last Captain Logan show, and we didn't get to it, which is part of why I wanted to mention it now. But uh, Hulu's ad-supported tier will increase from $6.99 to $7.99, so not huge. Uh, but their ad-free tier will move from $12.99 to $14.99, which is pretty steep. Uh, I don't love paying even the $12 a month for Hulu, and I have been because I watch lately, for whatever reason, I've been watching enough on it that I don't really want to deal with commercials. But at 15, uh, it makes me consider kind of dropping back. And the worry I keep having is that the ad tier will eventually catch up to what the old non-ad uh, price used to be, DJ. So like, I'm glad we're not there yet and that the yeah. ad price is only increasing by a dollar. But considering that fundamentally, I, and I mean, I'm, I'm getting, I'm accustomed to it now, I'm used to it, I'm not expecting this to change, but I don't like it. Fundamentally, I feel like if you're watching ads and, uh, th like, they're getting ad revenue, you shouldn't also have to pay a subscription fee. This is just how it is now, but fundamentally, I don't feel like we should have to pay uh, a, a regular monthly fee if we're also watching ads, but... Yeah, well, that's, and, and that's mine... And my uh, Hulu TV subscription will now go from $75 to $1,000. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, that was a joke, right? Yes, I don't know if they're raising that or not, but it's already stupid expensive. They would have to. Well, you're, you're talking about for Hulu TV. I guess they, I guess they wouldn't necessarily have to, but price. I should mention, by the way, that part of this is probably happening because we're seeing prices for almost literally everything rising right now. Um, particularly, of course, groceries and physical goods and stuff. Uh, but when you see any price increase right now, it's not really surprising given uh, supply chain issues and uh, stuff that 
you can't get shipped from overseas right now and things like that, like uh, and, and where we've been with gas prices for a while. And This is the stuff we usually talk about too much on the show, and I don't want to be a doomsayer and start and, and, and uh, suggest that everybody needs to start, like, stocking up uh, in your bunkers. Um, not all of us No, you bunkers. can't be a doomsayer. You're a Logan Tier. Yeah, <laughs> precisely. But... Uh, it, it's it's just the facts. It's just the way it is. And the worry, of course, is that once prices start going up, it's hard to expect them to ever go back down. Yeah, I need a bunker myself. Maybe I'll dig one in my new house. Or at least it's hard to expect them to go down for physical goods. Uh, this kind of stuff we have seen fluctuate. Uh, I don't want to say that streaming is, is a speculative thing exactly, but uh, we, we have seen uh, some of these services occasionally drop their prices and uh, or and, and not just temporarily like like sometimes uh, for the sake of competition we, we do see a drop so this could be temporary but it's a question yeah but it is kind of, it, it is kind of a weird idea to be like okay well why would they think oh everyone's paying this price now so why would we lower it <laughs> yeah and then again, Disney is introducing an ad-supported plan, so everybody is going to this now. Netflix is about to have one. Uh, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Disney is going for the once cheap service. I like that. Will dramatically <laughs> increase from its current $7.99 price tag to $10.99. A month. If you want to stick with the current Disney wow. Plus price, yeah, then that's that's a pretty steep jump. I um, think I'm going to cancel. I don't even want to pay seven ninety nine. I, I I don't I don't think it's even worth that. Well, I say it's steep. I mean, it is the same jump that Hulu did, mm -hmm. uh, and of course they own Hulu, so they're handling it the same way. Uh, I kind of wish that they would just merge the services, especially since Disney now has no qualms about having rated R material. Like, why not? Yeah, they have everything on there now. They've put all their ABC content on there, like all the. TV shows, and it's just kind of like a streaming service now. It doesn't seem like a kid's only streaming service anymore. I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit, but I, some of these bundles are starting to feel a little scammy to me, DJ, where you've got companies that own multiple streaming services, and instead of merging them, uh, and in, in I don't mean to be a hypocrite, there are cases where I'm not liking uh, what I'm hearing about merging but this is not the same thing as your HBO Max merging with Discovery Plus because those were two companies that weren't connected, one of which bought out the other one, and now it looks like they're going to massively maybe compromise HBO Max and turn it into something that it wasn't instead of just giving us all of that content altogether. Like, that that's maybe a little bit different. Now, if that comes together and you still have all the hubs and you still have a lot of the content that, uh, that at least I like, it's going to be hard to complain as much. But we've already seen them act so much, just like original HBO uh, content, that that's kind of frustrating. But then look at something like this, another thing that I meant to bring up on a previous Captain Logan show, and I'm now just getting around to mentioning. Uh, so he, this is Hollywood Reporter, uh, Showtime, this is from uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Showtime added, or I guess a week ago, added to Paramount Plus in revamped bundle offering. Uh, new Paramount Plus and Showtime bundle were, will debut with a $7.99 a month promo price point. That's really cool, but the uh, operative word there is promo. Uh, this is going to be a bundle, and eventually they'll jump that price back up. Probably uh, that's that's why it's a it's a promo price, and uh, there's no good reason that those streaming services couldn't be one service at this point. I wish they would be, because I'm as much as I hate Paramount Plus uh, with a burning passion of a thousand suns, uh, I'm kind of stuck with it because of some of the offerings there that I need to have regular access to, and because uh, I am watching uh, not all of the new Star Treks, because most of it is awful, but um, I'm enjoying Strange New Worlds enough to keep going with it. So uh, I, I kind of have to hang on to that, but there are things that I want to watch at Showtime, and I just haven't wanted to add one more streaming services, so I've kind of avoided certain things that I've wanted to watch there. There's a show DJ on Showtime right now that I've been biting the bullet to go ahead and watch, Ooh. and I've been paying uh, extra for the add-on on, um, this is also complicated, right, on uh, uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime in order to watch it. And, you know, I always do this. I'll be like, I'm going to do this temporarily, and then it'll hit me like two or three months in a row, and I'll keep forgetting to cancel it. Like, I, like I've done that with Peacock. Where, You're like, their favorite kind of customer, sir. That's yeah, exactly. Want. Like, Peacock I don't, I don't regularly pay for, and I'll just use the ad version for something I really need. And Peacock is one of the best streaming services uh, because they're... Uh, 
even if they don't have a lot of off offerings I care about, uh, they are uh, weirdly customer friendly over there. And uh, from what I've seen so far, we weirdly customer friendly. I have oddly been watching a lot of Peacock lately too. We never did a video on Peacock. No, and we should have. <laughs> we should have done that. Um, it's a little late I gotta, now. I do got to say, yeah. I got to give respect to Apple TV Plus, as dumb of a name as that is, and it's not a great of a streaming service as it and is. And I always forget about that one. I give them respect because they sent me an email saying, hey, your subscription is about to renew. And like warning me, which is like what, that's like not what you do. That's the whole point is to trick people into auto renew and just paying you money without knowing it. But they sent me an email to give me an update. And I said, oh, cool. And I, so I canceled it before it charged me. So very cool, Apple. Blue Dragon 5 says, uh, Cap, watch Kidding and Your Honor on Showtime. Your Honor actually is what I've been watching. Uh, that's, oh. the, that, that's the reason I, I went ahead and uh, got that temporarily. Um, I am halfway through that season already. I'm really enjoying it. It's Brian Cranston. Uh, it's got, of course, a lot in common with Breaking Bad, but it's uh, and, and he's going to a lot of the same uh, kind of chops uh, in his acting repertoire that he did in playing Walter White, but it's a very different character. It's a very, it, it's a uh, different sort of premise where uh, he's still having to do some pretty awful illegal things, but this time actually for the right reasons. And it's a, it's, it's a really good person in the first place who's not remotely at all enjoying what he's doing, and it really is for his family. And uh, in this case, not to give too much away, but uh, he's a judge, and he is. I'm do, just doing sort of a recommends now because I think people should watch the show, but it's Brian Cranston playing a judge. Uh, so immediately different from Walter White in that uh, he is he is affluent and has a lot of money. It's not I I need a bunch of um a, a bunch of money to uh, support my family because uh, I might be dying of cancer. Uh, this one is uh, my son. I uh, accidentally committed a crime and he's uh, going to. Um, not not just go to prison, but possibly be uh, chased down by the mob, uh, by uh, the um, by like white collar criminals. If mm. uh, if if I don't hide the whole thing, uh, so his his son's life is in jeopardy. Not just that he's going to go to jail, and so he's trying to um, wipe the whole thing under the rug. And immediately, just like in Breaking Bad, uh, as soon as he starts, in, and he's he does the same sort of lying he does in that show. Uh, but just like in in Breaking Bad, he'll uh, immediately start like a domino effect. Uh, actions and consequences, and uh, it's it's really bleak. It's really depressing, uh, and it doesn't have the kind of humor that Breaking Bad does. But I think it really earns that tone. Uh, it's really well shot. Uh, it takes place in New Orleans, which is a setting I like a lot. And uh, anyway, uh, it's 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 a wonderful show. If if Breaking Bad uh, was starts not that the whole show is about this, but but if Breaking Bad starts from uh, one of the big problems in this country <laughs> being uh, the way we deal with healthcare, uh, Your Honor is uh, certainly about corruption, but also about uh, problems with the prison system. And uh, not to get too personal or anything. That's, but, yeah, that's your but, thing. Uh, pr prison reform is a big is a big thing for me, and uh, I and and a thing that I've been considering more and more, trying to find some way to get involved in because it bothers me so much. And. Uh, and, and not a thing I have any, like, personal dog in. Like, I don't know anybody that's ever been to prison. I've not gone to prison. It's just a thing I think about a lot. It's one of the, it, it seems to me like one of the biggest problems with this country. And if I was ever going to, you know, go, like, champion for something, it would be it would probably be prison reform. Uh, but anyway, so this show And that this is why really... every donation from tonight will be going to help prison reform. Uh, no, we, we don't have any way to I do would, that. I would consider doing a show like that. We could um, do a show like that. We it, did it a show like that once. with with a I don't know. I don't know if I should like champion a cause on this channel. I feel like maybe, <laughs> maybe this is not the place for that. But I, uh, I, but I also feel like it's a thing that a lot of people could get behind. You know, like like I want to do more charity stuff. Um, I liked the the comics for hospital thing because it's directly related to what we do. But um. I, okay, I had no idea what your honor was when you mentioned that. I yeah. was like, is that that new Steve Harvey show? Where he's like a judge. <laughs> no, that's called Judge Steve Harvey. And I've been wanting to watch that too because I don't understand what it is. <laughs> he's not a judge. <laughs> he has a camera on him. That's all you need. 
Oh man, Dan Danvers says people don't like it when you get political. Yeah, and I and, I, and I, I typically don't, and I don't want to start making a lot of political videos and that kind of thing. Um, the the closest, and that's why I hesitated when I said like maybe I would consider doing that kind of thing. Um, the closest I would ever go would be just raising money for something I care about, and then we'd spend the whole show talking about something else. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm not talk about I'm not time. seriously considering that in in the moment, but I. Uh, I no, I was just doing my joke. We're just talking things, and I'm. I was just imagining that for a minute, and I'm like, oh, I mean, if I if I could help in that area, I'd love to, but uh, maybe not using my platform. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying that. I, so now I am getting personal, but like, I, I've I've con I've considered uh, trying to get the, just myself in, in involved in that whole thing, um, in some way. I don't know why I brought that up. I probably shouldn't have done that. Anyway, um, but... You've mentioned it here and there before. Is that a Showtime exclusive show? It or is. is it just only available on there right now? No, show, I mean, it's a Showtime show. Showtime made it. Ugh, I am so done with exclusives. Yeah. Uh, like, especially as a physical media collector, because they don't release them anymore. Like, obviously, the Disney Plus shows aren't coming out. I'm, I just started watching the... I watched the first episode of the Lord of the Rings show from Amazon, and yeah. I'm sure they're never going to release that because... They want to keep it on there, so you have to stay subscribed. Maybe not. Well, you say that. Now, Amazon has released their other shows. That's true. They have released some. And um, also, they, they have to recoup a billion dollars. <laughs> Do you know that with Rings of Power? Is it expensive? Oh, it's insanely expensive. So, it, it looks amazing. It's crazy how cinematic it is. So, I, I was just like... A, blown away by ever, so many shots over yeah over. so i so, so i've heard a lot of mixed things about that i i wasn't planning on watching it because i'm not a lord of the rings guy i've never even seen the hobbit movies and i don't feel like I'd, i i'm qualified to weigh in on that at all but i i i'm hearing mixed things about it but um more often than not what i'm hearing is it looks great but the scripts are bad that that's what i'm hearing yeah yeah it it, it looks incredible. Like, I was like, how is, what is, I, I thought the budget must have been insane on that. Okay, but what was the story like? I mean, I've only seen the first episode. Oh, okay. It's, it's okay. like setting Fair pieces enough. up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. But like, there okay, weren't so... any crap lines that immediately jumped out at you 15 minutes in. It's like, what is this? Like, no, it wasn't like that C show uh, with Jason Momoa where like a, a literal line I saw in the trailer was uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I was like, oh my gosh, how, how did you put that in a, in a show in 2022? Mutali says every episode costs $60 million. That's right. Yeah. And plus she, this DX says uh, Amazon operates at a loss. Well, I'm hearing that no streaming service currently is profitable. So I guess they all have been lately. Uh, but you're, you're right about that. But I... They're still in trouble if this doesn't perform because, and I can't remember if I read an article about this um, on the show, but there has uh, been a lot of reporting that uh, Amazon Prime basically lives or dies now based on this show. Like, if it doesn't do really, really well, they're going to have to really restructure what they're doing over there for at least new content. Uh, it, could, it could really affect how they do business apparently, so I don't know. And uh, that's why they're advertising that show everywhere, even on the tape that you get on an Amazon Prime box in the mail. The last time I bought from Prime, it was just rings of power, rings of power, like across the tape, across the yeah. top of a box. Yeah, you can't go to like the shopping site without it popping up. Oh no, it's in, everywhere. In front of you. Yeah. But yeah, I hope I hope I enjoy that. I enjoyed the first episode. Um, there's only two episodes out right now, so I'm not. I can't really. Another streaming thing that I'm watching right now is Prehistoric Planet. Have, has anyone watched Prehistoric Planet? No, it's I don't know what that is. Uh, you know Planet Earth, the docu series yeah. where they just go around with beautiful images. Is this and a show Discovery you. show? This is an Apple TV Plus oh, okay. uh, exclusive, and it's dinosaurs. It's like that. It's a it's a documentary, beautiful. Oh wow! Like docu-series but it's about dinosaurs and this, the okay. visual effects are incredible it looks so good and uh they're probably never going to release that on physical because apple doesn't do that very much uh they, they won the freaking oscar for best picture last year and they still haven't released coda so I, I doubt they'll release prehistoric planet but i'd like to have that on blu-ray too because it looks great Okay, we are already 30 minutes in, so uh, real briefly, I want to do just a little bit of speculation. And based on, and I said merging because when I when I initially came up with this topic tonight, DJ, I thought that Showtime and uh, 
Paramount Plus were actually completely coming together to make a service, and that's uh, and that's not actually happening. So um, I kind of spoke out of turn a little bit when I said merging because there's not as much of that going on as I thought there was, but. Mm -hmm we're not seeing uh, as much of the splintering happening. Like, it seems like a lot of companies are starting to get wise and going, okay, there's maybe not enough slices of this pie. Maybe we shouldn't all jump into uh, our own corners of the streaming universe and make beds there. Uh, so I think you're going to see more consolidation before you see more splintering off. But uh, where do you see all of this in a couple of years, DJ? It's all one streaming service. Well, that's what everybody wants, but that's not going to happen. That's not possible. That's like no. Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck getting back together in a movie. Like, that's no. not going to happen. That would never happen. And that would be scary, honestly, if that <laughs> happened. Uh, that's that's not a good thing. <laughs> I don't. We don't want that to happen. No, uh, no because I that mean, would mean that would mean Disney or um, we well, can't say Paramount everything. Warner's because they're they're in huge. Uh, hot water, you know, money-wise right now, but, um, or I, I shouldn't say hot water, but they're, because that would suggest that they've done something illegal. That's not what I mean. Um, <laughs> but they're they're uh, they're in kind of dire straits right now monetarily. Uh, but, you know, what, what's another big company? Google, like, 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 who else could, Amazon, you know, companies that could buy out a lot of stuff and, uh, you know, consolidate everything real hard. Yeah, I think that's probably what it's going to be like. The big companies, Amazon, Apple, if Disney can get full control of Hulu and and like if probably five, I think would be ideal, right? Five and and not like five people own everyone, but I mean like deals like that pros that uh, profit both like all parties, you know, like that would be you know if you could just combine because uh, why has that never happened? I guess that's kind of what Showtime and Paramount is doing, but you said not really, but like. Yeah. Why can't you combine and it's like mutually beneficial, not like one of them has to cannibalize the other one, you know? Yeah, do you think we'll go back to something like the old days of Netflix and just find out that that model always worked better, where you'll have the few streaming services owned by whatever companies they're owned by, and then all of the smaller companies will uh, make contracts and sell their um, their streaming rights to different services, as opposed to every company thinking, "Well, I could we, let's let's cut out the middleman." Like, do you think ultimately what happens is the middleman comes back, but is also the service for a, a, a particular big corporation? You know what I mean? So, like, it's not the middleman for them, but then they'll host other people's stuff. Because it seems like that's what we're starting to see now, where it's like you, maybe you'll never get a Netflix again. Like like somebody that starts as a just a streaming service. Just, I mean, and of course they didn't even start as a streaming service. Um, they started as mail order, but where, where the whole point was just hosting content. Maybe you'll never see that again. Maybe it'll just be now you'll have content hosters, but they they're, they're from a big company that always started as a network as opposed to became a network. Is that is that where it's going? It's going straight back to TV networks. <laughs> We're just going to go full circle. And there's going to be ads again on everything and big giant packages that cost 180 bucks a month. It's, it's going to be exactly the is same. Is it true? Because this seems inconclusive to me. And I, and I saw some people in the comments saying this. Is it true that in the long run, none of this is really lucrative? And if so, then why is it all still going this way? Why wouldn't it fall back to broadcast? Or, because uh, I mean... Broadcast isn't where it's at in that the majority of people now, especially younger people, are not waiting for things to come on on TV. So I don't really mean that it would go back to that old model, but I mean, is it just, is it going to mostly go back to ad revenue? Is it going to be, okay, we have streaming, uh, like, we, we, we have, uh, you know, monthly commitments still from people, but ultimately, yes, we all have to open back up to ad revenue. That seems to be what's happening. Yeah. I mean, if it hasn't been viable for the last five years, then yeah, you gotta go back to what works. <laughs> which is ads. Which I don't get because I hate ads and I always skip them and don't pay attention to them. Or, I'm seeing, some, like, they work on some people. I'm seeing packages right now where people are bundling several streaming services together and paying 75, 80 bucks or more, which is just cable. And I know we've talked about this a lot, where it's like, the whole point was to cut cords and not have to pay for a cable subscription and to get out a little bit cheaper, and now you can't do that. And now there's this kind of entitled pro thinking, thought process from a lot of these companies that, well, of course, 
people are going to continue uh, having several of these services, and uh, like, like I don't think any of these services expect to be the only one that somebody is hanging on to. And so then it makes you wonder, because I, I had this thought recently, except for things like Disney Plus, HBO Max, where they're putting out, ex like you said, exclusive content, you have to get a monthly subscription in order to watch it. Would you actually get out cheaper? I guess it just depends on who you are and how much TV you watch, how, how many movies you watch. Um, it probably depends on whether you, whether or not you have five kids. If you're, uh, if you were to, every time you want to watch a movie or watch a TV show that's not exclusive, that you really could just rent on Apple or on uh, Amazon, and you just paid for the individual a la carte ones, I think some of us would get out cheaper now. I really do. Like four dollars per movie, couple dollars per TV episode. Uh, even for review right now, I'm probably not spending. If if I were if I were to buy each of those things a la carte, I'm probably spending somewhere between twelve to fifteen on on a really busy week, twenty dollars a week. Okay, at the at the high end, then DJ, I'm getting to eighty dollars a month, which is already what I'm paying for streaming services. So if it weren't for the fact that there are things on a couple of other services that I can only watch that way, that I am watching, I actually could get out cheaper if I was going a la carte right now. Oh, yeah. That, I actually want to move towards that way. I want to get to a place where I only have, like, one streaming service a month, and I watch everything I want to watch on that one, and then I cancel it, and I get a different one. I'm having a really hard time convincing my wife of this <laughs> because she wants to keep all of them all the time because she is so, like... Uh, I don't know what the right word is. She's not aloof, but like she's more goes on feeling like what, what she's feeling this day. I want to watch this. I want to watch this where sure. I'm like more regimented and like scheduled or like planning ahead of what I'm going to watch. So I could do that. But she's like, I'm in the mood to watch this today. So uh, but, but we did cancel HBO Max because it wasn't worth it. We weren't using it enough, but we probably will get it back soon to watch that Game of Thrones show. But yeah, we're, I'm trying to be more smart about that, that kind of stuff. I wasn't watching HBO Max because I've been watching a lot of Criterion Channel, um, but I still have to keep Hulu because she watches a lot of uh, live television shows so it's yeah i mean i i don't know how much more i could cut but uh it's it's a mess it's a mess and i don't want to fix my problem so you fix it large corporations and just <laughs> combine it yeah i mean there's a part of me that almost just wants to go back to buying physical again and there's stuff that like buying everything physical uh and just binging because you know i'm i'm actually well, no, more, i'm actually more likely to binge a show if i own it you know what I mean? Yeah, but like, I don't true. have the space for everything, and I, I don't know. It sucks because if you wait until a series is over, especially if it's like seven or eight or ten seasons, <laughs> you can get it a lot cheaper than if you buy it per uh, box, and it takes up less space, and it looks way nicer on a shelf. Like, I don't like to buy anything uh, season to season anymore. <laughs> so... Tell that to Smallville box collection that was that's going for a million dollars. But that's just because they didn't print enough of them and they went out of stock like really fast. What, what, do, you, what do you mean tell that to it though? <laughs> I just mean you said you could get it for a lot cheaper. And that's, oh yeah, like, well. It, so expensive. I'm saying generally speaking. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's, but I mean like. You can get Gotham box, but, for like 30 bucks. The whole yeah, show. But if, but if I, yeah, but if I had bought like all 10 seasons uh, in a clip with the DVDs before that Blu-ray thing came out, I'm still getting out cheaper than per season. But you're mm -hmm. right. Like that was, that was a whole different. And yeah. I'm not going to say the exception that proves the rule. <laughs> anyway, let's open up for questions now. Uh, so, Super Chat goal tonight. We haven't really had Super Chats yet, but I will still uh, maintain the goal. Um, since we're, you know what, we're 40 minutes in and we haven't had uh, more than one Super Chat yet. So I'm going to drop it to $100 night. If we hit $100 tonight, uh, I will do a 24-hour stream at the end of the month. And uh, I haven't decided exactly what it's going to be yet. And I might wait and let a top Super Chatter in another show help us select the topic for that even. Oh, I'm Bill not just building on top we're gonna, of them. we're gonna build on it yeah so try so try to get us there tonight if you're so inclined again not uh no pressure to anybody uh if we have a two dollar show tonight uh we had a great time hanging yeah. out with you guys yeah we did so uh or at least i'm predicting that that's what will happen i have had fun so far so uh let's go ahead and, and uh, go to the comments and see what folks want to chat about uh, can be this can be disney plus day whatever you guys want to chat about let's get into it all right, sir. I will go ahead and read the first super chat. Thank you. Uh, 
That is $2 from Brightburn1985. Wii, your favorite console, or do you prefer Switch? Oh, I de- easily the Switch. Um, I think, like, I hate to be like this. I think Switch is just objectively a better console than the Wii. Um, especially for game selection, if nothing else. Wii has one of the best libraries of all time, I think. At least for my my interests, my taste. Uh, all of the retro re-releases and... Um, and remasters and things on that system have been wonderful. Uh, and just the... Both consoles... It's weird comparing these things, right? Um, in some ways, the Switch is kind of the next thing we should have had after the Wii. It seems like that's kind of the natural development of the Wii, but you had the Wii U in the middle. and Yeah, we needed that inner... We needed that, like, uh, larva stage to uh, to really <laughs> morph into the Switch. Full that's metamorphosis. Tr- that's true. We're, we're like, you've got this gamepad that feels sort of like it's... <laughs> yeah, a... going back to that, by the way, I've played the Wii U since I've had the Switch, and it's like this massive yeah, thing that you have to huge. hold way out here. <laughs> it, it feels funky trying to play on that, yeah. But, yeah. but, it, but it feels like uh, a tablet that that desperately wants to be a uh, portable console. Yeah. But is, like, it's but, not but portable. But funnily enough, none of us thought of that until they made the Switch. Isn't that Like, weird? we're idiots. So we're like, we, we, we weren't even like, suspecting that that's where they were going with it. We're just like, oh, cool, it has a screen on right here. Yeah. Uh, I but. think, well, it, well, here's the thing. The, the, the Switch is not the first time anybody thought, wouldn't it be cool if you had a portable system that you could hook up to a TV? Because everybody wanted that when I was a kid. Like, uh, everybody wanted the uh, Game Boy uh, or the Game Gear, any of those things to uh, be able to be projected up onto a TV screen, which is why you had things like the Super Game Boy, where you could put your Game Boy cartridges uh, yeah. in a bigger cartridge and then play it on your TV and that sort of thing. Um, and it's not the Which first time, cool. obviously, look at the PSP, et cetera, et cetera, that people uh, were desperate for, and this goes without saying, for games just like uh, like cutting-edge graphics that you can take on the go, where it looks exactly like the game uh, you're playing at home. Obviously, this was the whole reason the home market started, where people wanted uh, arcade-perfect ports of stuff they were playing in the arcade that they could play at their house, and they settled for things like uh, Ninja Turtles, the arcade game on the NES, which is a fine game, but nothing like the experience at the arcade, because it's 8-bit versus the arcade. This is this yeah. giant chasm between those two things, of course. Uh, so, anyway, getting back to the question, comparing the Switch to the Wii is uh, is kind of odd, but they're both based on a, a novelty, a gimmick. Uh, one of those gimmicks is much more practical than the other, and one of them can do everything the first one could do, right? So the novelty with the Switch is, uh, isn't it nice to be able to play uh, anything you want to on the go? And so it's been perfect and ripe for re-releases of stuff. Very few people complain about, and, and there's a lot of good new stuff there too, but very p- few people complain about the sheer number of old games being released again on the Switch because uh, you can play it anywhere you want to now. You can play it in handheld mode. Mm-hmm. And uh, stuff that you can, uh, you know, download and hang on to, or uh, if, if you pay for the subscription and you like 8- and 16-bit stuff, um, you, you can uh, you can stream games with people in other places. I miss the virtual console. It should come back. It sucks we don't have that anymore. Nintendo has been awful about their online with the Switch. Uh, they're the worst company for that in the history of... Uh, of online it's really bad and like trying to find games and download them uh, on their interface is really awful because the farther down you scroll the slower it goes it's like they didn't know how to program it right it's very weird i uh, anyway so I listen to some gaming channels and I hear people complain about that a lot and I had never thought of it in, until... Because I'll only go the first couple of pages and then find the thing I want. But, like, I hadn't tried scrolling down a bunch and I did that once after I heard... Uh, I think it was, like, Review Tech USA or somebody uh, complaining about that. And I was like, oh, my God, it is really awful. Uh, but anyway, so, um, I don't know. All that to say, uh, yes, the Switch is a better system than the Wii, but the Wii had some wonderful games, and I still get it out uh, every so often. And uh, it has a lot of stuff that I wish would, would re-release on the Switch. One of my biggest complaints with the Switch is that, uh, just like the Wii, it's perfect for light gun games, and even uh, uh, more perfect in some ways. Uh, and 
they don't have hardly any. Uh, we got the House of the Dead uh, uh, remake, which is great, and they don't they've never released a gun. It's very strange, uh, and they need they need some light gun games for that. So anyway. Yeah, the switch was the switch was huge. Switch was a phenomenon for like two years, and then we're like we realized, oh, that's that gets old, and we can't play like real games on the system because it can't handle it. So you, you mean the Wii? Yeah. Oh, you said the Switch. Oh, sorry, I meant the Wii. The Switch is doing phenomenally well still, and it, I, Nintendo is going to stretch its lifespan for as long as humanly possible. And they're still in that place, right, where they're a couple of generations behind graphically, uh, but and it's probably getting harder and harder to program third party for it or to program uh, like versions of. Uh, current next gen third party stuff and try to somehow get it on the Switch. They're still doing some of that. There's way more third party on Switch than there was on Wii. That was a big problem with Wii. Uh, was it was just really freaking hard to program for. And the graphics were not that much better than GameCube in the 360 PS3 era. So that was that was really a, a, a big problem. Um, but yeah, we had some wonderful games. And, and some of the gimmicky stuff even was pretty fun for, like, an afternoon. You're right, as far as the motion control stuff goes. Uh, but the biggest issue with the Wii, and the Switch doesn't really have much of this this problem. Nearly everything on the Switch you can play with a Pro Controller or with Joy-Cons. And some of the things that force you to use Joy-Cons, that starts to feel a little bit more like back when we had to do motion control with Wii, and it's irritating. Yeah. I don't want to have to play everything <clears throat> with two controllers. Um, what about, what if you have a Switch Lite and you don't have Joy-Cons? Uh, that becomes a problem with things like uh, Mario Party. We're, uh, there's there's a new Mario Party now, I think, and I don't know if it does it, but the first Mario Party they released on that system, and I'm not a Mario Party guy, but my son Freddy got that, and uh, he's got a Switch Lite. We have both kinds of Switches. We don't have an OLED. I'd like to get that to, to get an OLED at some point because the screen's pretty. But anyway, um, they 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 have uh, they, they don't let you play that in handheld mode, DJ. So you can still play it on the Switch Lite, but the Switch Lite doesn't have a kickstand. So you have to like set it on your lap and then and then play it with Joy Cons and and you and you can't connect any other kind of controller for it with, with that particular game, but I do like that the Switch Lite does let you use uh, other separate controllers if you want to. It's just weird you have to do it on your lap. Yeah, that's weird. On the uh, on Pokemon Let's Go, you can throw when you're playing with the uh, convert like the portable version, you can just hit the button to throw pokeballs but if you're playing on the tv with the joy cons you have to literally use the motion to throw them and it's so hard it's so much harder than just pushing a button yeah there should really annoying. always be an option to uh, to go in and change it to whatever configuration you want there, there should always be that and and that's what i was getting at a minute ago um i keep interrupting myself the wii it had too many games where the game was was brilliant and delightful and wonderful, but you had to use motion control to play it, uh, and 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 that sucked. Like the uh, Mario Galaxy games had this, uh, where there's just there's certain points where you're gonna have to flip to, to like flick a Wii control a Wii remote, and you're like, I mean, I got used to it and it was okay, and the, and the scheme works, but I'm like, what if I didn't want to do it that way you know like wh why do you have to be a mac instead of a pc like like, like let me alter it you know yeah i remember whatever Give me some I, customizability i don't remember what um zelda game was was on the wii was it twilight princess that's the only zelda game i've ever played but you had to play with the crossbow the whole time yeah and your arm gets tired after a while it was really fun it's i actually loved it but it's, it's really tiresome that's after. impractical <laughs> Oh, we just got another super chat from Remix three six seven two zero. I could have talked about that all night, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I had weirdly a lot of things to say too. I didn't think I did. <laughs> uh, thoughts on Legacy of the New Fifty Two? Eleven years later, do you view it as a success or failure? Boy, this has I been personally... coming up a lot lately for some reason. You notice that we can't talk comics without New Fifty Two right now. That's true. We were doing Flash uh, Born to Run last night. New 52 comes up in the first two minutes. Six minutes into that video, I realized we're not even reviewing this book yet. We're still just talking about New 52. <laughs> yeah, he personally thinks it made DC continuity a mess to this day. It did. It absolutely did. Yeah, by and large, um, it was a failure, and it kind of turned into a commercial failure. I mean, it 
it kind of more or less wrecked DC. Uh, they were in, I don't remember the numbers now, I used to know this, but it's been too long, um, but they were in such bad shape when Convergence was coming out, and they lost, was it like, were they like two or three million in the hole? I can't remember now. Um, but there was a, there was a big there was a headline there was a big number that came out, and uh, they had to shift things fast, and that's when they did Rebirth, uh, which was the best DC had been in six years, and was the closest they got to being at like Marvel Now level, uh, and a lot of that stuff was really good. It's not, I mean, everything wasn't good, and everything wasn't bad at New Fifty Two. There were a lot of individual things I really liked, but as a reboot. Uh, it didn't. It didn't work out, and the whole thing was ill-conceived, and was uh, it, it did not have longevity in mind. Uh, the whole thing was not sustainable. And the biggest issue, uh, I'm hesitating because I've talked about this so much. I'm like, I know, I know a bunch of people have heard me say everything I'm saying right now. Um, but the uh, the biggest issue with it, beyond anything, was just micromanagement. Was just editorial. Uh, constantly making writers and artists redo things and uh, making really counterintuitive decisions and putting chokeholds on creativity and a lot of people left over it. Uh, you had a real split church for, for DC during New 52. Uh, they, they, were, they were a Baptist church right then. Like a, a lot of that, that, That's when a lot of people um, left. And, and, and Marvel did this to people too in various periods. But that's when a lot of people uh, kind of threw their hands in the air and decided to go try more creator own stuff. Uh, but yeah, so in the short term, and of course they touted up all their numbers and stuff when the uh, first batch of books came out and when they made it a big creator, or a, a big um, collective incentive. Because you know, DJ, this is a thing I, I realized, uh, and by the way, thanks to everybody who came out for the show on Tuesday. Uh, I had a lot of fun talking about uh, new comics and why I'm not reading them. And I, uh, it, it occurred to me that we didn't talk very much in that stream about the collectability aspect and things that the the big two could do uh, for us as collectors, uh, those of us that have that have uh, kind of lost interest uh, to come back, or things that are kind of keeping us away. And I'm not going to heavily get into that right now, but I wish I had made one of my five things more about uh, collecting because I, I was talking a lot, of course, about reading, but I, I, I buy singles as much to collect as to read, and I can read digital. I don't have to, or, or I could buy trade if I wanted to. I don't have to read singles. Like, what are you doing to make me want to continue owning them? And uh, New 52 did this brilliant move where uh, they were like, we have, uh, j just having a number of specifically how many titles they had made collectors want one of all of them. And even if they didn't continue past that, uh, there was there was this feeling of, uh, this is this is a big event, and I don't mean a big story event, I mean a big event in comics, where they've rebooted their line. Uh, this has never happened in history. Every single number one is the beginning of a new status quo, if not the, the, the beginning of a new version of a character. Because, um, you know, you had things like Batman where the whole history was in a five-year bubble. But then uh, you, you, had, you had other stuff like Animal Man, just starting over, kind of reinventing this. Uh, Resurrection Man, nobody even knew what that was except for me. I was literally the only person on the planet that knew what that was. I was kind of excited to see that come back. And I guess that actually was something of a continuation. Um, but, again, kind of a start for a new status quo and all, in, in all of that. Um, and so... A lot of people came in, and even if they didn't read them all, they just had to own them all. And DJ, this was such a big phenomenon that they did a hardcover trade of every DC number one. You couldn't read that cover to cover. It wouldn't make any sense. But just because collecting all of them, but how short-sighted is that? That's not sustainable. You know, so that week was one of the biggest m weeks ever in comics for how much money they made. It was insane. And then you could just, you know, it would be, it would, it would be sort of like if you tried to ride the wave of, of Death of Superman. You know, if it was like, mm. we're going to kill him every week. <laughs> it's yeah, like that movie with Tom Cruise. It's like that movie with Tom Cruise where he dies over and over and over and over and over and over. That's a, that great, that's a great movie, by the way. Um, it should have been called Die, Rinse, Repeat. 
because that's what was on the box. And, and, that, and that was originally uh, the title of it, I think, and then they decided to change it to something more generic, and that's why I can never remember the, the actual name of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it was Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow, then, there you then, go. like, the title, the cover actually says Live, Die, Repeat. Anyway, yeah. it's like... I'm sorry, I thought and, you were asking me what it was called. An Edge of Tomorrow story. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a good name for an anthology series, though. OAW Entertainment Edge just says, tomorrow. what's that sound? Do you hear a sound? At the moment, no. I don't hear a sound either. Is someone else on the call? Has someone hijacked the call? Is there heavy breathing? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't hear anything. I don't know. He could have been talking to somebody, somebody else in the chat. No, there's other other people say say they're hearing a noise. Uh, sounds like a pencil sharpener. Well, that's weird. It must have. It, it must be gone now, because there there really isn't anything. Unless you guys are hearing. Give me a second. Yeah, I mean, like my my uh, my computer's fan motor is uh, is running a little bit, but it it does that. I don't think you guys usually can hear that. <laughs> my wife just said I heard the sound too. What is happening? I don't know. That's I don't. So I don't weird. hear anything, you guys. Yeah, I don't. I don't hear anything. Is it okay? The noise is gone. Says that that the that the noise is now gone. Um, yeah, it might have been my air conditioning. I uh, I don't think there was plumbing this time, was there? Any number of sounds it could have been. Houses making settling sounds. Yeah, here in a little bit, I'm gonna I'm gonna start making weird noises and see if anybody no notices. I think. Uh, but anyway, I I digress. Uh, but. Yeah, overall, that was a failure. Let's move on. All right, we got another super chat from Adrian Reina Martinez. Thanks very much. Adrian! Adrian, uh, thanks for making me play uh, Battletoads. I got farther than I thought I would. Oh, that, that was that was fun. wonderfully entertaining slash frustrating video to watch <laughs> earlier today. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, so it bad. <laughs> and it's funny you should mention that because he says for four ninety nine stopping by to apologize for the nightmare that is Battletoads. No, you don't have to apologize. Damn that Wookie oh, hole. Oh, the Wookie <laughs> hole. God. And then after a while, I was like, you know I what? That now. You know what? We've got to stop saying it. And then I just kept saying it. I was like, this sounds bad. It sounds dirty. we got to stop saying Wookie hole. And then I kept saying it. I couldn't <laughs> help it. Also excited to finally get the Cowabunga collection tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? I thought it did, or, or are you just getting it tomorrow? Because I thought it was out already. I thought it was supposed to come out like August 27th or 28th, and I keep forgetting to get it. Um, yeah, because I think guys have been streaming it and stuff, but uh, yeah, good on you. Uh, I will try to do a Cap Can't Play on that uh, when I get it, and I'll just jump around and sample different bits of it probably. Um, Sweet. Do you know if they're making that like online multiplayer like the other game that you just played yes they are uh Ooh, i think select games are um and i know that at least maybe just the fighters but no i think actually some of the beat-em-ups are too oh that'd be awesome once you get that landline in man we gotta we gotta do that <laughs> landline you make it sound like i've got to get like a phone line <laughs> no, he doesn't mean landline he means once i'm set up so, so that i'm this is inside baseball crap that we don't need to be talking about right now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. At, the, at the moment, it's difficult for me to stream with people and broadcast it because of bandwidth issues, because I, I'm working on, um, uh, what do you call it, wireless, because I'm in a basement and my uh, router, or pardon me, my modem is uh, clear upstairs like 120 something feet away so we're gonna finally get uh, a line in ethernet cable across the ceiling all the way down so that we don't have that issue anymore but i haven't gotten it done yet that that was supposed to be a project ceiling this line. week we haven't done it yet hopefully this weekend we can get that knocked out that's what he's talking about and i felt like i had to explain all i had to, I had to waste three minutes to explain all of that just so that people were like the hell does a landline have to do with playing ninja turtles on the switch <laughs> no he's getting a landline in so we can have people call into the show on a red phone I have the red phone on my... You know what? That's what we should do. We should somehow <laughs> rig it up so that you can talk to me on that phone and we can hear it on the... That sounds like a disaster. This sounds like a logistical friggin' nightmare. But it's good TV. It's good streaming. Would be damn good TV. But I could also just pick up the phone, put it to my ear, and make you think that's what was happening. And if you didn't see this episode of The Captain Logan Show, you might believe me. Um, anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, uh, so, so, one thing with, uh, the Ninja Turtles collection that's really cool, DJ, one, uh, and, and I forget which, but I have heard that, uh, one of the versions of Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, because 
they're all on there. And I don't know if you've ever played that, but they're all different. There's one on Genesis and Super Nintendo on in NES, and they're all completely different. Uh, the, it's weird on NES because it's a two-button fighter, of course. And it's uh, and all the designs are based on the movie. So it's a uh, oh, wow. purple costume shredder, and he looks awesome. And yeah, it's a neat game in 8-bit. But anyway, one of those, I think it might be the Super Nintendo one, I'm not sure, they've apparently optimized to try to potentially turn it into a, uh, like, uh, regulation, like, league, uh, uh, competition fighter. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. For Nintendo 64? No, not 64, Super Nintendo. Oh, Super Nintendo. Wow, that's... In that. But like they've, is, they've it, is it good? Is, is it that good? That's what I'm is saying. It... Apparently, they've, they've optimized it so that so that they can turn it into a tournament game. Hey, uh, that's exciting. It, it I'd is. I'd love to have a really good turtles fighter. Yeah. Well, I mean, those were all pretty cool. I don't know what extra they've done to it, but it's just nuts to think that they think that they can get a like big tournament game out of it. I I, I wonder if it'll work. We need a, a modern turtles fighter with because you have so many characters. Do a do a waltz turtles game. So many characters. I know. No, it'd be great. But don't do what they did on the Wii and just make it a Smash clone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that one called? Shredder. What was that called? Because they they did one that was a that was a kind of a clone of Brawl, and like it's okay, but it's. Yeah, it's called Turtle Smash Up. They Smash literally, Up. Yeah. They weren't even ashamed. They They're put not even trying. The title. <laughs> They're not even trying. They put Smash in the title. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh what was that other Turtles game like that kind of had a waltz-looking aesthetic with comic book? Was that a, was that good? Was that no? Bad? It was awful. But it looked oh. cool, but it was terrible. Dang it! Yeah, I forget right away what that was called. We uh, can't can't catch a break with Turtles games. Good thing the retro stuff is good. Not lately, but I would. Uh, but I'm with you. I, 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 and what it honestly should probably be. I don't know how you'd feel about this, but given how cool the Turtles were. Uh, as DLC with Injustice 2, I'd be okay with just using that engine. Yeah, I... Because I like that engine a lot. I used to play a lot of Injustice. Like, I, w I wouldn't mind a Turtles game that was... Like, like maybe change it up a little bit, but that was just based on yeah. that engine. I, I'd, be I'd be I'd play it, but it's a little stiff. It's kind of like the Mortal Kombat versus, well, like, a Capcom. Well it's, well, it's based on Mortal Kombat. Yeah, exactly. It's a little stiff. I like more, like, Tekken... Like, I think you need, like, a more flowy Soul Calibur combo thing for an acrobatic turtles in my opinion but okay but then are you asking for a 3d fighter or are you okay with it being a because once you go to tekken you're you're saying you want it to be a 3d fighter i mean i i'm fine with that either way i mean okay either that or like a marvel versus capcom that's what i was gonna say if you're in 2d it's it's either it's a, it, basic systems it's either mortal kombat or it's capcom mm-hmm but I'm with you. Uh, I also would love a, a Capcom level or type uh, in internals. And don't get me wrong, I wouldn't mind a 3D one either. They're just never going to make that. Yeah. <laughs> is what I'm saying. That's not going to happen. Uh, because everything what is, is that backwards Godzilla now. One they made? I had fun with that Godzilla Destroy All Monsters one. That one's that fun. I haven't played that in a long time, but yeah. No, it's good. Isn't yeah. it weird how backwards things are now, though? Where, like, for a long time, nobody cared about 2D side-scrollers anymore, and nobody cared about 2D fighters, and nobody cared about 2D beat-em-ups. It's all back. And now, what you're really hard-pressed for is uh, the stuff that we were desperate to finally get into in the late 90s when the technology was just barely there. So you can make a really great-looking Tekken game now, and, and th they'll still occasionally come out. But people actually don't care as much about that as they do 2D fighters. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Whatever. We can't win. We can't win, Kat. Uh, I think uh, a, a Turtles game in the Soul Calibur engine would be amazing because they've all got melee weapons. Yeah. Like, I never thought of that until you said it, but you could totally do it. And I used the the guy with the, with the bow staff quite a bit, so I would love a Donnie in that style. It'd, it'd be kind of weird because they move so fast and the Turtles have these big bulky shells, so it might look a little weird, but, I mean... They're, they're super turtles. They, they can move fast. It's fine. That's ninjas. true. John Kelling says multiversal turtles fighting game, basically turtles forever is a video game. Yeah, that, that, that'd be cool. 
But that if you did that, it would mean that you could pick between like eight or nine DJ different versions of four different turtles. It'd be crazy. Where you're like, okay, you're gonna be Raphael. Do you want to be A7 Raphael? Or do you want to be Movie Raphael? Or do you want to be Tom Waltz Raphael? Or 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 do you or do you want to be Next Mutation Raphael? Oh or no. <laughs> <laughs> just go on and on and on. Oh, they just you add the 2012. Wham! They just add the slide whistles and the spring sound effects when you're punching. <laughs> and they move really awkwardly. Yeah. And the choreography is the worst. Yeah. Oh man. That'd be great. You're just giving people wet willies, way. like the attacks are just like wet willies and like <laughs> knocking on people's heads. <laughs> I think it would be really fun though if you could be like, I'm gonna be 2003 Raphael, and I'm gonna go up against. Uh, you know, like, movie Raphael. Because video games is where, I uh, like, like, crossovers are, are really fun. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I feel like that's where they should have stayed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's just for fun. You're just playing. It's just, uh, it's just a fighter. No, that'd yeah, be really absolutely. cool. 2003 Turtles, you got 2012. I mean, they could add the rise of the TMNT, but nobody yeah. would play as them. No, I mean, they, they. I don't like that show, and they look terrible. But it would be fun just for the sake of... Well, but what if that ended up being, like, like one of the better ones to play as? Because I actually kind of enjoy that when there's a thing I don't really care for, but then I have to pick it because it's one of the better ones. Because that's just always funny, where it's like, ah, I hate this, but they did a really good job with it, so I guess I'm playing as it. Yeah, we get 2012 Splinter where he looks more like a hamster or some kind of gerbil or something. Oh, John, that's a good idea, too. He says four-on-four four showdown fights. Like, make a team of different turtles. And you could play it a... You could make it a four-player fighter. Now, you run the risk of it getting too Smash-like, but you could still do a four-player fighter that, that didn't work like Smash. Mm -hmm. Potentially. Anyway... These are wonderful ideas. And Cinemagraphic says that there should be a Night Watcher skin for Raphael, which I wholeheartedly approve of. That oh, sounds awesome. That's amazing. They should have skins for that movie, just the 07 movie. Like, are they all, I mean, they, what, what, yeah. Michelangelo was working for, like, uh, birthday parties, and he had, like, that big, goofy turtle head on. Well, and there's no reason you couldn't have nine different versions of Casey Jones and of April and, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This just writes itself. Why has this not happened? Yeah. But why hasn't this happened? Oh, but think about all the shredders. Yeah, you know how fun it would be to have all the different shredders. And then if they've got the license, just like massive. Yeah, and then they've got the license. Get get uh, the shredder from the Batman vs Ninja Turtles movie in there because that's my favorite cartoon design of shredder. Now it looks so good. Wow, I haven't seen that. That's they, cool. You got to because they just they take the A7 design, but they make it scary. So like it looks just like the 87 cartoon shredder except he's he's just menacing and yeah it's awesome yeah anyway uh we got another super chat from remix 3672 well thanks so Zero. much what's up he says is there anything you think dc could do to fix its continuity at this point or is a is a hard reboot fully committed unlike the new 52 the only solution i think it's First of all, it's hard to say because I haven't been regularly reading in four years. So I don't know what all is happening there now. All I know is, uh, if I'm right about this, because this is just hearsay from folks that I, I know that are reading current, um, all I know is apparently they uh, finally went back on New 52 because... The Rebirth was a sort of soft reboot. Like, it, it was it was more of a reboot in the direction of storytelling than it was in what the continuity was. And, like, we brought back, um, you know, the old Dan Jurgen Superman. Well, he was already back, but, like, we got rid of the new 52 Superman. We replaced him with Dan Jurgen Superman, and then they did a weird kind of blending thing where they sort of pretended like they forgot that they were in the DC Universe, and they just brought back more or less the old the, the old Superman continuity while they kept everything else. It was weird. But anyway, more or less, it was still the same continuity we had with New, New 52. And then sometime after I quit reading, uh, they back, they got rid of that and backtracked and went back to the old continuity. Um, I have to assume that we're more or less back in a place like we were, or like people felt like we were before the original Crisis on Infinite Earths where it's just confusing and uh, things don't line up and you would kind of need a flat-out reboot. But I also think just for 
the sake of a, of a change of pace and so that we're not just repeating ourselves constantly, something we don't talk about enough, DJ, is just, like, the sheer number of years and, and stories we've told with these characters. Like, I think both of these things can be true. I think everything is played out and everything could be fresh again if only the, the right people were writing them and had their own personal spins on them, right? It's fine to tell a story again and it can feel completely new and fresh because there's new eyes on it and there's there's uh it it, it comes somebody's drawing from their own personal experiences right uh, like every, every story under the sun is it has been done to death so why can't we continue telling serialized stories about old characters however when you're stuck with uh having to continually try to go back to status quo or more of what we do now where we keep trying to get as far away from status quo as we can because it feels like we've been there and done that too much and we're trying to do that while keeping readers that's even harder so i just think like forget whether or not the continuity is too complicated and it doesn't make sense anymore i think the issue is just that uh, we're retreading too much of the same ground all the time and everybody feels burnt out for whatever reason or at least too many writers and, and, and artists feel kind of burnt out it, it really feels like we're just kind of spinning our wheels and doing the same stuff over and over again or even worse trying to come up with weird marvel does this more we talked about this on tuesday weird goofy gimmicks where we mash up things and go hey i wonder why this story is never told before because yeah, it's bad because it's a dumb idea and there's no good reason to tell it um and could it be done, be done well sure but the only reason you're doing it is because it's never been done so your heart's not in the right place in the first place so um i think what we need is i uh, is every few years or every decade or two uh we reboot and that's not and and, and not because we need to uh, keep starting from new places and refresh everything what i mean is tell like full f beginning middle to end stories finally don't make everything have to be serialized, DJ. Um, <laughs> it's preaching to the choir, man. I've been saying this for years. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just go... Uh, and, and I mean, I guess it would be refreshing things, but what I mean is, don't just, like... I have everybody start at a particular uh, status quo, a particular age, whatever it is, and just keep them there for 10 years, and then tell a bunch of stories, and then reboot. What I mean is, let people, uh, like, grow old and die. Let people get killed off and not come back. Uh, and then just every so often, you know, basically you just do like ultimate comics, except it has an end point and you only do one or you have several continuities at the same time and you just keep cycling them out. You know, you just tell a story and you're finished and you start again. And you could take so many more risks that way because you could go and hear me out because I, I don't want to get into... Um, like, like, uh, you know, identity and race and gender politics and stuff. But you could do whatever crazy stuff you wanted, and anybody that wasn't interested could go, well, I'm just going to wait till the next time around, right? So, like, you know, if this time you want to put, uh, the, you, you want to even have, like, some other person start as Batman and it's not Bruce Wayne, maybe you could get away with it this time, because we know next time around, it, it, it might be Bruce Wayne again. Or, again, just have several different continuities that maybe only have a couple three books in them or have or, or it's just one book and do the the suggestion i had for number one on my list of five things that would maybe bring me back into comics and just do a uh and just do out of continuity stories but like maybe maybe several of them at the same time that are in different continuities um, that's what we should do. I think the days of people really caring about the DC universe and the Marvel universe are by and large kind of behind us. Uh, that's what a lot of the really good out of continuity Batman stories have been telling us lately, because those are the ones people are talking about. Um, more more often than not. And yeah, there's still diehards that are still uh, that, are, that are still in it and still care. But uh, you know what I'm hearing mostly, especially about DC? What I'm hearing, uh, and again, not this is not me personally trying to get political. I'm just saying what I'm hearing. What I'm hearing at Marvel is, uh, it's it's too goofy, it's too cutesy, and the house style is terrible, <laughs> as far as the art goes, and that uh, too many stories seem to be uh, like 
like uh, politically motivated or or about or, or like uh, pandering to people in some way. That's what I'm hearing. I'm not reading them. What I'm hearing on the DC side is 90% of it is Batman. And if you want to collect Batman, you can't because too much of it is Batman. Uh, and it, it, like that, that's all. That's all I'm hearing over there. It's just it's too much Batman. Yeah. Another thing that we could try is why why can't we take breaks? Like, let us miss the characters a little bit. Like people were so mad that they were making a Spider-Man movie in 2012 when we had one in 2007. Five years we went with that one, and people thought it was too soon. We're, all right, we're already doing another Spider-Man thing. Have we ever gone five years without a Batman comic since he was created? Like, Well, no, of course not. <laughs> why, why, why can't we stop? And Why does it have to be every single month forever? It's... Because the, well, I'll tell you why with that particular Cycle out some example. characters. Can I tell you with that particular example? It's because DC has put all their eggs in the Batman basket. And, <laughs> the Batman basket. And they, and they have to. Because they have been in such dire straits, especially financially, especially since COVID, that if they didn't, they might would have shut down by now. That's what I'm hearing anyway. Isn't that crazy if that's true? Yeah, I just hate that they've that, built like, the industry to, to work that way, where it's like so one-sided on one character. Well, and what I want to think is if they took risks and they told good stories... Uh, they might limp along for a while, but eventually, in the long term, they could get themselves uh, out of that hole and they could create uh, a really good infrastructure again. Uh, but they're just, just like with, with New 52, all they do is look at the short term, you know? Uh, like, it, it, comics really, at least the big two, really functions the way the U.S. government deals with the deficit. I mean, like, they're, they're, we're never looking at the future. It's always, like, how do we hang on for, like, four more years or a couple more months, you know? Like, that's that's what they're doing. That's what it seems like to me, anyway. Uh, DC Comics really Yeah, they need should... a 10-year plan like Zaslav. <laughs> yeah, well, and I am saying what they really need is quality, but D DC Comics really should change their name uh, to... Detective Comics comics because uh, all they are is Batman now. Yeah, and they need to focus on the theatrical and stop worrying about stop worrying about streaming. Theatrical comics is where it's at. Um, I am starting to hear the sound, and it is definitely on your end. It's very strange. It's it's coming into my headphones, and it's not in this room. The only thing I mean, yeah, unless... it sounds like wind. The only thing it could be is because my because this room is empty now, my air conditioner sounds louder than it normally does. That's, that's probably that's probably what it is. But it's go, it's weird. It's going in and out. It kind of feels like we're at the ocean. <laughs> I feel like I got a seashell up to my ear right now. Yeah, I didn't tell you. This is just a green screen behind me. I'm actually on the beach right now. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's scary. John Kelling says, DJ, why don't... A DJ colon. Why don't you stop making Batman comics for a while? DC shoots DJ dead. <laughs> Plushy DX says deficit. Did I say deficit wrong, or did I not say deficit? Did I say something else? This is why I don't talk about the government. <laughs> what the weird thing is also is that my ear's been running the whole time, but people keep saying the sound comes and then stops. Yeah, no, that's what, that's what I'm hearing too. Though it's it sounds like the ocean. It's waves of the ocean. But it uh, doesn't sound like super loud in my headphones. But I guess it's distracting some people. And my error just kicked on, so it might it might cancel it out. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, double the room noise is always better. Okay, John Kelling says DJ has a ghost that needs busting. Matali says I said deficit. Okay, so apparently Plushy DX is just choosing words in sentences I say and writing them. Was that the wrong thing to say? Was I, was I, was I wrong about that in some way? He's just putting emphasis on it. All I mean is we tend to put it off, you know? We tend to run at a big deficit. That's what I'm saying. I think that's just facts. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't... I don't know I don't know a lot about uh, how the government's run, but that's the thing I hear people complain about a lot. It could be a total coincidence. He could have just really liked the word deficit. <laughs> he's he's the word I've never heard Cap say. Deficit. 
deficit. Detritus. Um, <laughs> Blanchard X says putting emphasis. He just he just really wanted us to think about the word deficit. The word of the day is kids, deficit. Okay, uh, we are an hour twenty into the stream, and I uh, we once again, if you have just come in or if you came in just a few minutes ago, uh, we have a super chat goal tonight that we're not close to, so it may not happen. But I'll mention it again in case you want to help us get there. I uh, wanted to do a, a uh, in, in the description it says 125, but I dropped it down to 100. I want to do a hundred dollar goal tonight uh, for a 24 hour stream at the end of the month. If we hit that, I will promise to stream for 24 straight hours. Maybe we're not hitting it because people really don't want to have to listen to me that long. Uh, but that's uh, that's the goal tonight, and if we don't hit it, I will do a 24-hour stream some other month. Maybe next month? I don't know yet. I really want to do one soon. Uh, but I was going to go ahead and try to squeeze it in this month if, uh, if we hit that. So anyway, moving right along. All right, let's go back to some pre-written, shall we? From the beginning of the stream? Sound good? Hey, we, hey, we, you know what? Uh, we, we do whatever you want, DJ. Uh, I oh, I your, have the power? I'm at, well, I'm at your mercy when it comes to the questions because I'm too lazy to write them down myself. That's why I hired you. Okay, okay. Well, we just got a, we just got a super chat. It's also in DJ's description, the job description to be yelled at. Yes, that's part of it. So that's... if you're ever like, God, you yell at DJ a lot, it's like, it's the small print, man. And I don't know if you read it, but it's in there. I didn't. It's the, it's the escape clause. It's the sequel. Um, actually, I think that's the third one, which is horrendous. Uh, so here, I'll go back. We just did get a super chat, but I've already said we're going to go back to the to I don't want to say that I can't wait for this stream to be over because I'm having a good time as always, and I'm really enjoying talking to you guys, and I'm sorry I'll totally listen to that question in a minute. But I've got this bag of Sour Patch just, like, staring me in the face right now. Oh, man. And I just... I've got such a sweet tooth today, and I cannot wait to break into this. And I didn't but have... But do you have a sour tooth? I was running... Fair point. I was running late, and I grabbed this at the gas station, and I was and I was running late, and I couldn't break into it before the street. It's just it's staring me in the face like Cap, eat me, I'm sour. And like people hate it when I eat on camera, so I'm not gonna eat them right now. But like God, I just I want to break into this anyway. Um, I'm I'm distracted by this, which is why I brought it up. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, at the beginning of the stream, Blue Dragon Five asked me. And he, he called me Good King Wentz, at Good King Wenceslas. He, he <laughs> yes! almost, almost spelled it correctly. He, he replaced an N. And he almost went with my third thing. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't remember that one, but he did call me Good King Wenceslas. I think Tannenbaum is easier to spell. One letter off, but, um, okay. but, but we really appreciate it. And so uh, awesome. I'm going to read your question. He says, thoughts on the Wall-E Criterion release and what Pixar films should get that treatment next. Yes! So many thoughts. Yeah, this so, is crazy that this happened. But can I say real quick, with all due respect to you and Connor, Disney Plus Day was a slow news day when that was the exciting thing that came out of it. <laughs> can I just say that? Because like I know you guys are big Criterion collectors, and it's crazy that that came to that, and you guys never expected to see something that mainstream, much less a Disney thing, much less a Pixar thing, uh, to come to Criterion. But like... And it's just because of the, the circles I travel in, I realize. But I heard more about Criterion Wall-E today than I did Star Wars or Simpsons or anything from Disney+. Plus. It's just, uh, oh my god, I can't even believe it. It's nuts. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. I mean... Yeah, I mean, it, in the circles I travel in, it's it's massive. Everyone's freaking out. It's it's just so many questions. Like, what, what, is is it, so what does questions. that mean? What does that mean? Disney is licensing out their stuff? That's insane. Well, and it's insane, for, to be fair, um, and I'm, I'm playing up uh, that that is small news compared to things that you might have thought would come out today. But um, I, I, but I gotta say, it's, it's crazy for other reasons, like, there's been kind of this fear that Disney is just done putting things on disc at some point. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I mean, at least at least they're newer stuff. If they if they're going, because I guess they are re-releasing some things. But if they're going back to something like Wall-E and putting it out Criterion, uh, that means that at least like big exciting special editions of things, be it through Disney or through a, a third party like Criterion, might be possible for some of the things that are Disney Plus exclusive. I mean, that doesn't it being Wall-E doesn't prove that. But that is pretty weird. 
right? That like I thought they were. But so maybe weird. that's the point. Maybe that maybe they themselves are trying to get so far away from physical that there's money in it for them to let somebody else do it, but they're not going to print them themselves. Is that possible? I know right now they're still putting some movies out, but I'm just saying in the future as they continue, because they're not putting any of their Disney Plus exclusive stuff on disc. As far as I'm aware, I don't think they've yeah, and they could be thinking yet. about that. It's weird. Yeah, I'm not necessarily saying like it's super exciting that we're getting Wall-E in the collection because I already own Wall-E, and now, like it'll be cool. I might pick it up, but I don't know. But it's more interesting. You're saying like, precedent. The precedent that it sets is insane. Like, is it just Pixar? Is it Disney too? Is it is it Touchstone, Miramax? Uh, is it Fox? All the stuff that they own. Yeah, are, good. Call. Are all of those up for the bait? Is the straight story Boy, finally going to get a Criterion release? The only film by. Uh, that director that hasn't got one because Disney owns the rights to it? Don't say that, okay? <laughs> because now I want it. That's what I said to Connor first thing, and he was like, don't give me hope. He sent me the, the, the he sent me the gif of Hawkeye where he says, don't give me hope. Uh, I mean, who knows? We, Anything can happen. We did our request ranking, and I put that at, like, number three, I think, of the, like, 26 movies we've done. I really like that movie. I saw that. Yeah, I, I checked out your list on Letterboxd. Check him out, and he's Captain underscore Logan on Letterboxd. That's me. made... A second list. That's me. I am. Yeah, <laughs> I, I am thinking about re- renaming the show to the Captain Underscore Logan Show. Yeah, yeah, that that'll just class it up a little bit. It'll make me look hip because it's all internety. <laughs> It'll look like it's code. It's look like you're like you're writing code. It's the at Captain Underscore uh, Logan nineteen eighty nine show. <laughs> anyway, I yeah, the box looks cool. It's really cool artwork, yeah. At first, you just think it's a picture of Wally and Eve, but it's actually just trash stacked up to look like Wally and Eve. It's pretty cool, um, but yeah, it's it's. I don't know what else is up for grabs. Connor even mentioned to me that maybe Pixar is like, it's it's a sign that Pixar is trying to move away from Disney because they haven't liked how Disney's been treating them the last couple of years. Like, that so would many be things. Nuts. So many things that could be nuts. There's just there's just so many questions. <laughs> I was looking for this picture to show everybody, and I'm not immediately finding it. I'm seeing articles, but why am I not seeing that actual box? Because uh, they put out a box. You just go to Criterion.com, and it'll be it's the big banner right across the top. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, they just dropped that today. They already announced their November pickups. It's coming out in November, and they already announced their six November titles. But for some reason, they just waited on this one until right now, out of the blue, to shock everybody. That's Yeah, that's really wild. Um, but you make a terrific point about other companies' movies they have the rights to now. Like, could you imagine? And of course, I'm not. I haven't been a Criterion collector. I own one of them, and that's because I, uh, I think DJ bought it for me, or was it Connor? I did buy that for you. I, yeah, I think it was you that got um, me uh, uh, facing the crowd. Facing the crowd, yeah. Which is lovely, and I haven't looked at the special features yet. I need to do that. Uh, but. I have watched it that way, uh, but I haven't. I haven't looked at the special features. Um, it's also a huge deal because they only have, I think, three animated movies in the whole like fifteen hundred like, collection. Right? They've got Watership Down, and they've got Fantastic Planet, and then I think one other one. But yeah, it is. Uh, oh, uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. But think that's about it. how many animated movies are owned by big houses that they wouldn't be able to get their hands on. Like I wonder if that has to do anything anything with it, or if they're if if just up till now they've not been interested in the animation. It's weird because they have a lot of really cool obscure animation on their channel, but they just oh, haven't yeah. prioritized okay. it in the. Uh, well, they only do so many releases. The collection. And understand yeah. again, I haven't been buying these. I don't look into them. You guys are. Uh, I don't want to say Criterion snobs. I can't think of a better word. But like you guys are really into this this whole thing, and I'm I'm not I'm not familiar. I don't know anything about it. I like. That that whole uh, that whole company and concept was a complete uh, uh, blind spot for me until a couple of years ago when Connor started talking about it. Like I I didn't know that was even a thing. Um, but boy, could you imagine it for stuff like Alien and Predator? And I mean I mean it'd just be nuts. Some of the stuff that they that I uh, that they could open up. Yeah, yeah, and I don't go to Criterion for that kind of stuff. Like th- that, that gets released like every year anyway. So like I, I like the fact that most Criterions I don't know, I don't know the films. It's, it, it teaches me about stuff that I don't know about. So I'm not like saying, oh, I want all the Disney. I want Cinderella. I want Beauty and the Beast. Like I, I don't need a release for everything. But it's more those things that like, 
Disney owns that they're never going to release, like the straight story. Yeah. Uh, like what C- C- Connor really wants, what about Bob to finally get a release because it doesn't even have a Blu-ray, like it's, stuff like that. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I've been wanting it's, to rewatch that because that was a movie I liked when I was a kid and I haven't seen it in forever. So yeah, those those really... those That got a that pop will... figure. <laughs> but it doesn't have a Blu-ray. Why does it have a pop figure? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pops. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that, some of that stuff that, that we'll never see any other way would be really cool to get. You ever see a pop figure and you go, it's really neat they made that. I bet they sold five. <laughs> yep. I think that every time I look at your obscure Batman shelf. Except <laughs> except it's Batman, dude. Yeah, those will sell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Danivers says straight story with complete Criterion's Lynch collection, which Cap would be so excited about because he loves all of Lynch's films. Oh, man. Don't you know it? <laughs> Uh, what about Bob doesn't just have a pop figure? It has multiple pop oh figures. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. They released three variants for <laughs> What About Bob. That's nuts. Wow. Anyway. Any excuse to bring up the What About Bob pop figure? <laughs> All right, well, let's get back to... Because it's wacky. Where is that super chat that just came in? For Mr. Cool. Hi, it's Ben. All right, Mr. Hello, well, hold on, hold on now, hold on now. A couple of them came in while we were hang talking. Hang on, hang on. Tight. <laughs> Mr. Cool 210, what streaming service do you think is best? Personally, I think Disney Plus, says Mr. Cool. Uh, for my money, up before the, the what I've been uh, affectionately referring to as the Zaslav wave, <laughs> it's been HBO Max. Uh, and at the moment, I still stand by that, but that could very well be changing. Uh, what is yours, DJ? Yeah, well, we just did recently a top five. What is five yours of the, of the major ones? Of the major ones, yeah, because in our top five video, I put Criterion Channel as my as my best, because I think it is uh, the best made and the one I use the most. What did I say was 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 the actual number one? I, I can't even remember if I said if I said Max or not. I think you did. Maybe that was your number two. I'm not sure. I don't remember what I actually. I think said. you said Paramount Plus actually was your was your number one. Oh, uh, you were talking to the mirror universe version of me, <laughs> who does not have a beard but <laughs> or has, a brain, but but loves things that don't function. <laughs> yeah, Nega Logan loves uh, dysfunctional streaming services. That's right. He get, he gets up every day and he takes his engine out of his car before he goes to work. That's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but so that's my favorite. Um, that's the one I use the most. But before I was using Criterion, I definitely was using HBO Max the most, I would say. Yeah. yeah. I think that was my favorite. Well, because they had a lot of... Uh, a lot of crossover uh, between those two. Well, and, and, and I was just going to say, like, uh, classic movie, what, Turner Classic? Yeah, TCM. Mm-hmm. But I also just think it's really uh, well-made, well-structured, well-laid out. It's not impossible to find things like Amazon and Netflix. No, it's nicely streamlined. Uh, it's, it's, it's got a classy-looking interface. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it did. It's, it's a good UI, which is a yeah. term I never used until I started talking to DJ about streaming services. <laughs> and um, I got to get hip with the lingo. It's got a good UI. Yeah, yeah, user interface. Uh, but yeah, we. Um, I know we, what it stands we never for. Did, uh, we never did a Peacock one. No. And, and, a, and someone just brought up speaking of streaming services, they said, what about Tubi? We never talked about Tubi. No, that's true. That's true. And we never did a whole video on <laughs> IMDV TV, which recently changed their name to Freevee. What? Free V. Yeah. Free and, and, be, and because right, right. Wally named it. And because <laughs> Free V. And and be and because uh Free V sounds like just the dumbest thing uh that your your uh, your five year old got up and gave to a corporate executive and he said, Yeah, that's the ticket C. Um it's underneath it to this day. Because I said recently, like relatively recently, I think they've been calling themselves that for like a year now, maybe DJ. Eight, eight or nine months, I can't remember. Underneath mm. it, I'm pretty sure it still says, formerly known as or previously known as IMDb TV. And I'm like, if you have to put that and hasn't caught on yet, you should change it back. And I had this conversation uh, with my son this afternoon because he brought that up and I hadn't thought about it in a long time. He's like, hey, dad, you remember Freevee? And, and so we had that conversation and I said, okay, so here's what they should do. They should be like Prince. They should change their name back to IMDb BTV just rolls off the tongue, and then underneath it, it's it both should terrible. say, 
for yeah but at least you know what it is imdb gives them some credibility because it's supposed to be a free streaming service but like but you calling know a IMDb... streaming service tv is so stupid it's not tv it's that not... makes me think of a completely different thing <laughs> okay you say that but that's consistent with a lot of other youtube tv is live tv but it's on but maybe that's okay because it is but it's live tv it's yes live TV. imdb okay. is right. not okay all right i I, 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 I get I get what you're what you're laying down, but um, he takes it. What they should what they should say, what I should say now is, IMDb TV, formerly known as <laughs> Freebie, formerly known as IMDb TV. That's what it should say. Oh my gosh, the streaming service formerly known as Freebie. That is that is terrible. Yeah, just call it. I am. I mean, even as much as we hate the plus IMDb. IMDb Plus would be better than IMDb TV. Like, don't put more initials in your already, or don't put more letters in your already really long. Can I be honest with you, though? The more I'm trying to say it and I keep flubbing <laughs> up my, my letters, the more I'm sort of getting why they changed it. But it's still it's still stupid. Anyway, uh, for, for my money right now, HBO is still the best streaming service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't be after a bit. Also, I want to clarify something. Uh, from a, a couple of streams ago, and I, I don't remember who it was, but somebody in the comments um, was trying, I'm not trying to call people out, I just want to mention this, because I haven't looked it up in case I'm wrong about it, uh, and I'm not going to take the time right now to look it up, uh, but just because we, we got to move on, uh, and I don't want to have too much typing um, in my microphone, but I need to put this someplace else. But anyway, uh, somebody I, I tried to correct me on a, on a, on a stream recently <laughs> and said, Stop it! <laughs> And said, because uh, I was I was talking about uh, HBO Max and Discovery Plus merging, and uh, somebody was like, "Oh, that's happening at the end of the year." And I'm pretty sure the news was back in August in a year, like August of next year that happened. So we have a whole year now, a little bit less time uh, before we have to worry about that merger. I think that was the news. So not like January, not like next year they merge, but in a year from the time that that announcement came out. I, th I think that's what was happening. Oh, okay. Well, guys, if just I'm... don't even don't even tell us about that kind of news. I don't want to hear news that's not happening for a year a year away. If I'm wrong about it, uh, then that's that's gonna suck earlier. But anyway, yeah. All right, we've got some super chats coming in. We're trying to get that goal, so. All right, thanks, guys. Once again, hundred dollar goal tonight, and uh, we very well might not hit it. But thank you guys for uh, for trying. Those of you that are throwing in super chats right now, uh, not uh, of course never a big deal if we don't hit it. But uh, again, just just me having fun trying to mix things up a little bit. If we uh, don't hit that goal and I don't do a twenty four hour stream at the end of this month, I will still try to get it within this year, uh, next month or the month after. But uh, I will promise to squeeze it in if we get to that. To that goal and uh i don't know what it'll be about yet but uh I'm, I'm gonna maybe let one of you guys pick it all right go ahead all right logan dodd 4.99 are there any highly praised comic writers or runs that you just can't get into oh sure i mean you're putting me on the spot i don't know if i can come up with any right now but sure <laughs> well it was just a yes or no question yeah uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh you need you need to you need to add explain like it's an essay question. I really like shouldn't answer this this way because this opens the floodgates. Uh, this this will make people think to do this more. But I I have um I have had this with certain runs that I couldn't get into until somebody finally forced me to on on a request. Uh, so like I don't think I would have ever been able to get into uh, Walt Simonson's run on Thor, which is now one of my favorite runs in anything. I'm not even a Thor guy. It's just really, really solid. I uh, it's more than solid. Uh, it, it's it's uh, it's wonderful um, world building and uh, there's a lot of really really great uh, character stuff and intrigue and everything. Uh, but I had to read. Uh, that whole and I, I don't take requests for like entire tomes of comics anymore uh but somebody when i had a p.o box sent me the giant hardcover for all of walt simonson's thor and uh asked me if i was interested in reading it and uh if if so they'd send it to me and i, I would send it back to them and uh i guess i had more free time on my hands back then because i was like sure let's do that and uh it was this giant like you know five six seven hundred thousand page whatever it was uh tome and uh 
if I hadn't had to do that for videos, DJ, I don't think I ever would have gotten into that. I think I would have gotten two, three issues in and been like, this is interesting, but it's not my bag, and, and, I, and I would have stopped. Um, I've always wanted to read through um, the, uh, the, the Grey Hulk stuff, um, hmm. the Peter David run, and uh, I've maybe at one point I, I tried like an issue or two and it's Hulk and I couldn't get excited about it but I, like I want to finally sit down and, and, and read that run um, I'm trying to think of better examples but like there's I, I've definitely had this with stuff yeah that is a you question um, <laughs> as it is anything comic related sure and I mean I've always been hit, hit and miss with Morrison uh, like I, I've reviewed sections of ones where I'd be really positive on it and then people would wonder why I never read it again and it's like well I've got my two brains right there's what I like and enjoy reading and then there is uh, the critical is this accomplishing what it's after thing right and I'm very good at separating that and so you know, you know I read uh, a few issues of the beginning of Morrison's Doom Patrol it's great I don't care <laughs> Like, I, I'm not going to keep reading that uh, unless somebody yeah. makes me. I just, it's not my thing. I don't know. And that's part of why I've had a hard time going back and, and uh, watching the TV show. I watched the pilot. It's really good. I'm not really into that. It's not my thing, but it's really good. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Some of it's just um, just interest. Just to, And I was talking to Austin about this the other day. You guys might not realize this, but if it weren't for the channel, if it weren't for doing this 13 years now, I I would be so much less well rounded. Yeah. Like there's sure. so much stuff I would have never bothered with and wouldn't be into. Like you guys don't even know how much more outside of my wheelhouse I've gotten, how much bigger I've built that wheelhouse. And some of you guys I know I still look like really picky and like I'm not I uh, there's only the couple of genres I care about and everything. You have no idea how much more limited I used to be in my taste. And I, I guess um, I, I don't mean to act like I'm special. I, I guess as people get older, a lot of people will kind of broaden their horizons a little bit. But I'm telling you, if it weren't for review, I don't know that I would have anything like as much as I have. Um, yeah. I, I, I bet I never would have been, become a biopic guy. I freaking love biopics. Um, I really like nonfiction in a way I never used to care about before doing this. Yeah, know. you. if you go back to the like some of the early videos with like, you know, Eric or Manos or something, you you were the mainstream big two guy. Yeah. You were, that was you. And, and I uh, apologize for it all the time. Because I was like, yeah. I'm not cultured. I don't know anything. Yeah. I remember those days. Those were the days, my friend. We thought they'd never. Anyway. All right, Mr. Cool. Keep Thanks, it up Ben. The one-man army here. Getting us to this goal. <laughs> he's trying. I appreciate it, buddy. I mean, he's paying with Canadian money, so does it really count? Uh, well, it's going to take a little longer. <laughs> yeah. No, we appreciate it, man. Thanks, man. And my apologies is, if we don't get there, but thanks for helping us out. Yeah, great questions anyway, uh, and hopefully great answers. Is there any Marvel slash DC character you hope gets adapted but hasn't yet? Still holding out for Captain Universe. <laughs> and then he says, got to get that Super Chat goal. Uh, this is such a harder – and, of course, this comes up every so often. This is a harder thing to answer now, and I hate being negative when I say this, but – because I'm lukewarm on MCU at, overall right now, particularly with Disney Plus stuff, there are characters uh, here and there at Marvel that I would love to see finally adapted live action that I don't know if I want to see right now. Like, I, DJ, I was horrified thinking about what Watiti might do to Beta, Ray, to Beta Ray Bill and was really glad that didn't happen in Love and Thunder. So, like, I... I, I would I would love to see Beta Ray Bill adapted, but I don't know if I want it right now with like where where MCU is and where Thor is. And again, I'm not saying everything MCU is terrible, but like they've been really phoning in some of their CG, particularly on the TV side, and even sometimes with movies. And uh, I don't know if that would look good. I don't know how they characterize him. Like I love that character. I don't I don't know about that. It's it's maybe good they haven't done that yet. Uh, and then there's other Thor stuff that's weird that they... I don't know why I'm going to Thor right now. There's other... I guess just because I was thinking about uh, Simonson a minute ago. But it, it, there's other Thor stuff that's weird that, they, that they've never done. Like, Baldur was supposed to be adapted a couple movies ago. That never happened. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's... Uh, that's in answer. And then uh, Austin and I were talking about this the other day. Um, did he say MCU or just Marvel? 
He said Marvel or DC. Marvel or DC. Okay, cool. So I can say this then. I uh, in, similarly, uh, something I would love to see, and Austin had a terrific point when I was talking to him the other day. He was like, I don't know why Sony hasn't announced this project yet, but I don't want Sony to make this movie because it's Sony. Uh, it, it, with just the way they've handled uh, Venom and, and Morbius and uh, what we've heard about Madame Web and just the way they're doing their whole Spider-Man shared universe about Spider-Man. Um, I really want a Spider-Man 2099 movie, live action. I think it could be wonderful. I want it more than I... would then I then I would want to see a Batman Beyond in live action. I uh, and both of those are really stylized things that make a lot of sense in animation. But I think you could do a really cool like like a you know neon kind of Blade Runner thing. Yeah, I was thinking Blade Runner twenty forty nine, but with obviously an action movie <laughs> with, with twenty nine. Yeah, well, it has to be. It's a superhero thing. Uh, yeah. but it, it could. But it could be but visually. But, dude, it still could be pretty cerebral, because uh, those comics kind of are, and, uh, like, there's no reason you can have a wonderful blend where there's a, where there's a really, you know, interesting story with some uh, really, really cutting um, social commentary and satire like the Peter David books had, and uh, that's all I want from Spider-Man now, is, is a, well, that's not all I want. But that's a that's that's a major thing I'd want, and uh, also with these, this is an aside. But with with these companies, uh, kind of desperate for new characters to put on screen, uh, still trying to milk the uh, the the superhero fad while it's still like pop figures, where we're not sure why it's still as popular as it is, but we might as well keep making them because people are still buying them. Um, it's kind of weird that they haven't thought to go to something like Spider-Man 2099 where like it's uh, you know with the especially with like the, the, the big um push for more diverse characters and stuff like it's Miguel O'Hara it's it's like it's a Hispanic superhero like I'm re I'm really kind of shocked they haven't done that yet uh, but then I guess they're I guess they're doing them in the animated side uh with with the sequel to um Spider-Verse, uh, which is great, and, uh, like, I love that movie, and uh, 2099 was the, the only thing I was missing with that, and, and I was I was glad to know they were going, they were doing that in the sequel, but I don't want more Spider-Verse, I just want him to get his own movie, even if it's yeah. anima in animation, exactly. so, like, are you with me, like, if the sequel to that was announced, it's 2099, it's, yay, but that's not yeah, what I Yeah, I wanted so. them, I wanted that to be the beginning of kind of a universe, I don't but not a universe, but like a line where they just make Spider-Man movies in that in that style. Uh, that are all in different universes. Yeah, but I, I don't want Spider-Verse 2 to be another Spider-Verse, but that's what it's going to be. But, but it hopefully is. it's still good. Well, but yeah, what happened to all those announcements about TV shows? Because it sounded like we were gonna, they, they were going to try to have their cake and eat it too, and it could have worked if they did it right. And it sounded really money-milking where it was like, let's greenlight a bunch of TV shows. Oh, God, how's this going to work out? Maybe it was COVID, but it's like, I guess it's not going to happen at all. Like, we haven't, I mean, may, maybe we will still get those. I haven't heard about those in a long time. Like, wasn't there a, like a like a Spider Gwen show announced and like there were three or four of them? And well, they then... put all their eggs in the 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 morbid basket, the Morbius basket. That worked uh... out really well. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, uh, so yeah, Spider Man twenty ninety nine is the big one for me. That's a great answer. Good job. Good show. Good, good, good show. And he's not saying the show is good. He's saying good show. Like he's a British person. Like good. Like good show. Good form. Good form. Good show. <laughs> All right. Where are we now? Uh, not, okay. Big Bad Harv 95. Where do we go now? Uh, 499, since certain IPs are hitting public domain. I just want to do karaoke right now. <laughs> like, I'm in such, such a mood right now. For some, I just can't stop singing tonight. I don't know what my deal is. So we'll be wrapping up the show early, and Cap will be going live in just a few minutes. No, a I'm karaoke. not doing that. Oh. I don't have time. I don't have time. I've All got right, too much well, work to do tonight. We got a, we got a few super, super chats coming in, right under the wire. Go. So Big Bad Harv wants to know, since certain IPs are hitting public domain, if Superman did, what would your take look like? What would you keep the same, and what would you change? Well, first he'd split Superman into two different entities, one red, one blue. I would. That's what I'd do, yep. And I'd kill one of them off, and then the other one would just attend the funeral. Um, no, <laughs> I would... I. Yeah, uh, the, the the public domain Superman thing uh, has come up quite a bit on the show, and uh, I've never had the best answer for this. Because um, you've had so many attempts. <laughs> my answer to like what would you do with Superman I, is has always been cop outs, right? 
Well, you said it on the last show. You would have uh, the guy from everywhere, everything, everywhere, all at once play the uh, the new Superman. See, cop out answer. <laughs> like, it's never what would you do with with uh, with with like Stan, with, with Stan as Superman or or sometimes even Clark Kent. Like, you know, the first thing that always comes to mind is, well, I wouldn't do Superman. I would just tell a really <laughs> epic Jarrell story before Krypton explodes. Uh, I would I would do what. Basically, it's it's my answer is always remaking TV shows that sounded cool in concept but weren't what they should have been. All I want to do is redo Krypton and redo Smallville. Like that's all I want to do. So you need a, it, you need a third series to do like your trilogy. I guess Superman would it'd be, be the, new Superman, <laughs> new, new super hyphen man. But that wouldn't even be fixing a thing. It would be adapting that comic, and then that comic wouldn't be in the public domain. That's the problem. Is that it would just be the carry. It would just be Clark Kent. It would just be, it would just be Superman. So I couldn't even do that. Now, if you're saying all of DC stuff True. goes in the public domain, that changes everything. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Because what exactly could you do with Superman? Like, how many of his, his villains? But any of his of his. What villains? I've heard is when when there was, and I never thought it would happen. I uh, but when there was the potential for a minute for Superman to go in the public domain, and then uh, DC. Am I remembering this right? DC, and I think it was the Schuster family. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, guys. It's been a while. I'm going from memory here, but it, it, but I think the deal was they they came to some kind of agreement, uh, so that that didn't happen. And uh, if it had, it would have only been, I'm pretty sure, uh, Superman himself and like his power set. I don't even know how how much of the rest of like origin and stuff you'd get. I don't know if you'd get Krypton. I don't know if you'd get even Clark Kent. Like I I don't I don't know what all you'd get. Yeah, I'm not sure. That, so that's really if, kind of tantamount to this question: is how much of it do you get to play with? If yeah, if you don't get any of that, then I would just do like a Fleischer Superman universe where he's just fighting like bank robbers and stopping trains. I'd keep and... him pretty grounded. I wouldn't have him fly. It'd, it'd be it'd be pretty fun to to have uh, just the crusading Superman. Like yeah. I would try to find the sweet spot between Batman and Superman. That, that's that's how I would tell Superman stories, where uh, he would be much more of a vigilante than your like your like standard you know, like altruistic Superman, but he wouldn't go or, or or just you know with the the kind of you know does no wrong has the value system you're used to with Superman, but he wouldn't go as far as Batman and he would like smile more and stuff and he's you know what I mean he'd still wear primary colors like mm -hmm. okay okay with that you know what I would do. You know what I would do? I would do a six-issue miniseries where it was just Superman trying to enact prison reform. <laughs> <laughs> Superman versus the prison system. It'd be su <laughs> Superman 5, the quest to fix the prisons. It's just the end of Superman 2 where he, where he puts Lex and uh, what's-his-face in the, like, the jumpsuits. The stripes. He, he picks up prison wardens from America and he flies them to Germany. And he just drops them off in Germany and is like, look at how they do prisons here. This is how you should be doing it in America. And that's just, that's the whole, that's the whole book. That is not what I would do. <laughs> Riveting. Riveting <laughs> reading. That's a, that's a joke, folks. <laughs> um, no, I would fix Smallville. I don't, I just, I don't know how else to, that's what I would be excited to do. I would keep season one exactly as it is. Yeah, he would, would turn let... it into a podcast called Talkville, where he would just watch every episode and talk about it with the co-star. And I've said this before, but this is always my, my, my Smallville pitch. S season one is exactly as it is, warts and all. The season one has issues. But it's but, but I, I, I thought there were two big... Sorry, what? But it's salvageable. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's great stuff after that. I don't mean to say that it's unsalvageable, but that, that would be the place where I would want things to... to uh, Diverge. Yeah. Uh, because there's two big missteps at the end of that season, I think. Uh, one is Lana Lang not finding out that Clark has powers uh, at the end of season one. Especially because, and I don't mean that they have to go along with the comics, but when the comics are more interesting, when Silver Age comics are more interesting <laughs> uh, and more and more believable and the drama is better, you maybe should just go with them uh, versus what they did, which is keep her in the dark for six years just to just because they're afraid people will stop watching. No, take yeah. the freaking risk. Let Lana be your Clark's confidant after that, and they either date or they don't, and if they're off again, on again at least she knows and that's more interesting and there's more drama to, to build from that so she finds out in the tornado 
and let's let's Lionel die. As much as I love some Lionel stuff after that, that's the clear point of of uh, of of like the road of darkness that he starts with where you had comic book Lex he had the blueprint for what Lex looks like uh, uh, through, through that whole first season and then he lets his dad die and he slowly becomes him after that um, you'll never convince me that those were not the clear endings uh, uh, resolutions to the uh, to the two big cliffhangers at the end of that season and then you go from there and there's so much you could build on after that and of course, yeah. I would do I would do Krypton completely differently, but yeah. Well, I say that I uh, like like the idea of evil Jarrell was really enticing, and they just didn't run with it. That's the thing is some of the counterintuitive, crazy stuff they were doing. If I was rewriting Smallville, I would actually do them. I would just be consistent with them, and I wouldn't put my tail between my legs when it got weird. Like <laughs> you know. Anyway, I, I'm sorry for making for going back and making everything about Smallville, but it's on my brain right now because of that podcast. But also. Um, if I'm speaking from the heart, these are the Superman things I really want to do. <laughs> if he's speaking from the heart, it's always Smallville. Ah, <laughs> uh, because I've got faith of the heart. I'm not going to sing that one. Uh, mm. Because that's that's a sappy Rod Stewart song that should have never been a Star Trek intro. Anyway, moving right along. All right. Robert Wilde, $2 Hi. for Cap and DJ. Thank you for clarifying. The, the, we those are, would be the people in the call. We are the only two here. That's true. Uh, but no, he might have just been saying for Cap and DJ. Like, he's trying to include me. So I appreciate it. Oh, okay. Thanks, man. Because so otherwise, it, you would it just wasn't like. Me. This is not an at O Tannenbaum question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. What, but, but thanks for including me. Thank uh, you. Either way, it is Cap uh, favorite. And DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Always with the ampersand. Favorite Spielberg movie. I have to say Jurassic Park because it's in my top 20 of all time. Uh, I don't think it's actually his best movie. It's just my favorite. Uh, is Jaws technically a better written film? And in some ways, maybe even better shot than Jurassic Park? Maybe. I don't like it more. But uh, I like how gritty that movie is. Do you have a favorite Spielberg movie? I don't. Do you ever, you ever watched a Spielberg movie? I, not many, no. Oh. Um, I don't. Yeah, he said, yes, it was meant to include DJ. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Robert Wild. Sorry I don't have a good answer because I I, I guess I have to This is to why also... no one includes you in questions. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm talking I'm about kidding, directors I like. I have to go so with... I don't care about anything made by Amblin Entertainment, okay? I have to go with Jurassic Park 2, I guess. Um, Not Jurassic Park 2. I mean, also, I have to go with Jurassic Park as well. I want you um, to say Lost World, though. I want you to be like, my favorite... Spielberg uh, movie yeah. is The Lost up. World, Michael Crichton's favorite novel that he was forced to write. Yeah, it's a toss-up between Lost World and uh, Kingdom of the Crystal, Crystal Skull. <laughs> That's not a... Sp well, I guess that is a Spielberg movie. Yeah, um, no, uh, I, I really about. like... I think... Um, For a second, I was like, he didn't direct that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he it, did. I think Last Crusade... Last Crusade is my favorite indie movie, but I... I think I have to probably just go with Jurassic Park, even though Jurassic Park's not my thing at all. I don't like, like horror, like monster chase movies. But uh, I think that's I haven't seen any of his big ones. Like I haven't seen Schindler's List or Catch I Me If You Can. I've never seen that either. Saving Private Ryan. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot of his catalog I've never seen. Because I always think of him as blockbuster guy, but there's a bunch of stuff he's made. Well, and I mean, you could call those blockbusters, but they're not action blockbusters. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody really knows what that word means, by the way. Yeah, I, I, Close Encounters of the Third Kind is up there for me. I actually really enjoyed that movie. I've only seen it once. Close but I had Encounters a really is experience. great. Uh, I it's don't great know movie. it as well as I should. So those are some of my tops. Close Encounters, Last Crusade, and Jurassic Park. No, that's, also, a, that's a legit answer. No, Not enough people go back to and talk about that movie and remember it. It's like he eclipsed it too many times after that. And that's a shame. Yeah. But that didn't happen with Jaws. It's It's weird. No, I, I think it's maybe because of, well, it's a couple things. I mean, some of it's probably because of how influential that was for horror. I think um, science fiction got caught, so caught up in Star Wars that I think a lot of people sort of forgot about Close Encounters, even though it was also really influential on science fiction. And, like, smaller, more cerebral sci-fi movies that were based more on, like, 
you know, traditional sci-fi novels and stuff. So, like, you know, diehard science fiction fans remember Close Encounters, but it's not talked about the way Jaws is, or, or even, the, well, and for, and for him, E.T. E too, I guess, like, like, when you think Spielberg, like, that's the science fiction movie people think of. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the issue yeah, there. That, you know but what, also, change my answer. I will say Close Encounters. That's a great answer. I'm because, glad you brought that up. Because Jurassic Park is so not my thing. Like, if it wasn't dinosaurs, I wouldn't care at all. I just like it because it's dinosaurs, you know? <laughs> See, and I have that, too. <laughs> that's what it is. But I like the aesthetic so much. Yeah, exactly. The, and that's, the, totally the, a, that's totally a valid reason to, to do it. I'm just trying to I pick don't, a different movie because you said Jurassic Park. I don't care about the horror aspects as much, although I do love a good velociraptor chase. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Um, I, I do love menacing velociraptors that are making children scared. I, I do enjoy that. But, <laughs> kidding. But, uh, so much of it's just the, just the, the novelty of the theme park. This is the theme park. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's so cool. Which is why he prefers Jurassic World. I don't prefer it. I just like it more than anyone else because I finally got to see a, a living and breathing park. <laughs> I like it a lot less uh, after watching more of that. Uh, which... It's not fair, but it's hard to go back to. I don't know. I've never gone back to Jurassic World. I only saw it, I saw it in the theater. I thought it's it was hard good. to appreciate yeah, it, it cool. as much as I did in the theater. Like, it's it's fine. It's fine. The sad thing is that I... And it's weird saying this because you don't want uh, reboots or decades later sequels to just... Uh, play greatest hits every time, right? And just like be the same movie, uh, like beginning, middle to end. But, but finally getting to see a living and breathing park. There's a part of me, DJ, that really wishes we had had the original color scheme and stuff. Like it looks fine, you know, with all the blue and everything. But I missed the red and green, and like like the layout of the park is good. But as but like as much as I like it, I just I wish it was Jurassic Park again. Like I wish it was actually Jurassic Park. Yeah. Well, it's, that, that that aesthetic is just so '90s. Like they they obviously had to update it, but did they? I mean, they didn't have to, but I guess at they least felt it they wasn't white do. like Star Trek '09. <laughs> at least it wasn't like like I Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. It's the I dinosaurs. Ah, great question, uh, Robert Wilde. Yeah. For two non-huge Spielberg fans, but we got a good conversation. And he said in the comments that he really likes uh, Lost World, and that's totally cool. I'm just saying, I know DJ would never in a thousand years pick that movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Stegosaurus are really cool, and the RV scene is great, and the gymnastics uh, <laughs> kicking is awesome. But uh, The yeah. RV scene is legitimately uh, one of the coolest action scenes I've ever seen. Like, like, I don't love that movie. I think the pacing is awful. I think it's like 45 minutes too long, and I don't care about Malcolm's relationship with his daughter. Sorry, it just didn't... I, I did not buy that chemistry even a little bit. And I thought she was a good actress. I just didn't buy them at all. Uh, yeah. It's probably the right more than it was anything but that rv scene was a big deal to me in the theater uh and has always stuck with me yeah there's some great stuff in it um my biggest beef with it is that it takes the name of one of my favorite arthur conan, arthur conan doyle books and uh doesn't do anything with it except the fact that a dinosaur gets brought back but it's not a pterodactyl it's a t-rex yeah why did it have to be that title i've never liked that I don't like it. Title appropriation, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially from other science fiction great works. Like, that's weird. Don't do that. Yeah, no, but seriously. it'd be like if he made a... Uh, <laughs> bear with me on this nonsense. It's like if Spielberg made a movie that was like a biodome. And I don't mean like Polly Shore. But like a biodome <laughs> in... <laughs> had the, I did that on purpose while I was drinking. A biodome in the bottom of the ocean... And uh, it was an ecosystem, and he made a movie about that. Which, by the way, is not a bad premise uh, for a Spielberg movie. That could be cool. And then it's, like, really super popular. So then he does a sequel, and it's going to be called 80,000 Leagues Under the Sea. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, Jurassic World, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. 20, oh, 20, a... Pardon me. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That'd be a great one. Actually, no, it would be 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea... Jurassic Park. <laughs> or whatever it, that... Yeah, it, yeah. it goes before the title. Ocean Dome. 
All right. Uh, we are getting some Super Chats in here. and uh, We are at two hours, so I'm going to say, uh, and it's weird, I don't know how we've been broadcasting that long, uh, but I'm going to say final call for Super Chats now, uh, and we're not real close to the goal, so we probably won't meet it, but I will give you guys one more chance real quick in case anybody cares. Uh, so we'll go five or ten more minutes, uh, last call for Super Chats, and then uh, we will finish out and uh, I'm going to go to work because I have a lot to do for uh, stuff I'm doing tomorrow. Anyway, go ahead. And Bag Studios asked how close we are to the goal, so I will say we are at $54 right now. So... You know, we, when we do these things, we should probably... I'm so dumb. I should keep, like, a running tally on the screen or something because, I like, I can see it, so it doesn't occur to me that nobody else can see it. <laughs> so we're at 54 so if you did want to get us their bag, you would have to donate uh, $46. Don't, don't feel like you have to do that. <laughs> I got I to gotta tell you, though. He asked, so I'm just telling him. I have, like, friggin' toddler logic when it comes to live streaming. You know, where I'm like, if you, if I can see it, you must be able to see it. Well, you've only been doing the full live streaming thing for about two years, so you are a toddler. You're a live streaming toddler. (laughs) You're your first folks. Cap's a live streaming toddler. Put that on a t-shirt. Anyway, what was the question? Uh, Mr. Cool, 210. Last one I can afford. Yeah, what's up? We appreciate it. Yeah, no, we uh, really appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Who wins in a fight between your favorite Marvel character and your favorite DC character? <laughs> okay, look, I'm going to give it to you because I appreciate the super chat, but come on now. Come on now. <laughs> well, it's another, a who wins, but it's customizable. Another who wins in a own... fight question. Okay. He's okay. made it interesting. A little. So it's... And, and and who's your favorite Marvel character always fluctuates for me because I've always said I care more about that as a as a universe than I do any specific characters in it. So, so like, Mar- the Marvel Universe versus Batman, who wins? <laughs> well, Batman, because he's Batman. Uh, but yeah, so it's so it's Batman versus uh, either Daredevil or Spider Man twenty ninety nine. I guess I guess I'll go Daredevil, and that's one of those like age old who knows kinds of questions, right? Because they're so they're so evenly matched. So I don't know. It's hard to say who wins in a fight between Batman and Daredevil. Hey, with, with these, who would win? I hate these. But with these, like, who would win in a fight questions? There's always the, the question of environment and variables. And, what and exactly writers. And, yeah, and who <laughs> you want to win, right? Uh, so that that's a... Do you agree with me, though, that that's kind of a coin flip? Or do you think there's more of a clear winner for, there for, for batman daredevil yeah i mean i hate batman so daredevil <laughs> but but i don't know but i'm just saying i, I feel like the... i don't know enough about either character to like really put together a foolproof uh, analysis of it um okay i'm gonna i'm gonna make this even more interesting i'm gonna say uh, uh because because we can make it a ninja fight are you look if you want to do it we'll do it okay so it's I don't like these, but I'll do it, okay? I'm committed. Uh, thank you for the super chat. So, uh, uh, Netflix... Batman and the the uh, League of Shadows versus Daredevil in the hand? No, but that's interesting. <laughs> Specifically, no, it's still just, just each of them versus the other. And with their regular power sets and weapons, we're not going to take Batman's battle ranks away from them. And we're not going to uh, take Daredevil's... Uh, uh, really? Billy Club or or his powers away. Uh, okay, so he's not just blind. Like he still he still has his ra- his his uh, as Ben Affleck said, radar sense. Uh, good good. So he can still read with his fingers because that's important. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay okay mm-hmm. okay. I'm, I'm gonna do this two different ways. Okay, because I just thought of another one that's fun too. So ninja fight. It's so this so dumb. It's Netflix Daredevil versus Begins Batman. Oh, both see because uh, they're both ninjas you. now, and uh, I hate to say it, I think Daredevil wins that fight. Did you see what he went through with the guy with the blades in, in that in that season one episode where he gets all crazy cut up and stuff, but he still beats him? I don't know that Batman's walking away from that fight. Like you know, like no, I think Daredevil probably wins that. And then, and right. then, and ha- have I never thought of this before? And then we go. Ben Affleck Daredevil versus Ben Affleck Batman. <laughs> well, Ben Affleck Batman would murder, like, annihilate, like, cut his head off immediately. <laughs> he would steamroller over him with the Batmobile, and then he'd go back to the Batcave, and Alfred would be like, you know, you really should stop branding people. <laughs> uh, the only thing I know for sure about that fight is that the winner is Ben Affleck. 
That's true. That's true. And Ben Affleck Batman, because he would just like drive over him with his tank while he's like in his bl- when he when he's just like a blind man driving down the street. Yeah. No, Ben Affleck Batman definitely wins that. Uh, he said Absolutely. this one's for me too. Uh, so my my. Oh my favorite... god! Is, can, can I can I can I say something that's gonna be like? Sorry. Please do. This is this is not politically correct, okay? But I'm just imagining it, and I think it's funny. A trigger so warning. If, trigger yes, warning. If this is offensive to you, I apologize. But it's it's a it's a uh, it's a parody. It just came to me. It's funny in my brain. I'm gonna say it. Are you ready? Ben Affleck Batman versus Ben Affleck Daredevil. Do you see? You won't. <laughs> you. <laughs> you won't. Uh, well, that needs to happen. Get get on it. Uh, what's that YouTube channel that does just like fights versus two different characters? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to see. Do you see? Get Jason David Frank to voice both of them. All right. Well, yeah, Connor Nielsen, because he, he hasn't retired from that officially. J- just just cameos and Power Rangers. Yeah, because he only has to show his face. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he could be uh he could be Ben Affleck Daredevil or Ben Affleck Batman. He doesn't have it to cover his tattoos. <laughs> All right, so Connor Nielsen put in one, just boosted us up to 64. So Which is awesome, close. and thanks so much. But real quick, I have to give pop props to Ben because I hate, and I'm afraid that I'm setting a precedent here because I freaking hate the who would win in a fight questions. That was absolutely the most fun topic that we've had tonight for my money. Ultimately, yep. after I came up with Ben Affleck versus Ben Affleck and Ninja Batman versus Ninja Daredevil, I actually really enjoyed that, and I don't feel good about it. You know, I feel a little grimy after that. Yeah, you've made him feel dirty, Ben. So, so good work. Connor Nielsen says, if you're offended by that joke, I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> hey, thanks, Connor. Eh, some people are a little sensitive about that kind of that kind of joke. All right. We are on John Ty's Super Chat. Uh, he says, what do you give for the man who has everything, i.e. Superman? Uh, bacon, if they really like bacon. Uh, it's usually <laughs> a pair, power. some sort of perishable item, really. Uh, no, I, for, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting really silly now. Um, <laughs> We've passed the two-hour mark, guys, sorry. I think the correct answer is always you have to already know them well enough to, like, go back into their past and find the, like, one-of-a-kind thing that money doesn't buy, right? That, like, really matters to them that they never thought they'd see again uh, or something. So, like, some something that is priceless and can't be, uh, that's, like, really sentimental to a person. Uh, I think a lot of us have this kind of thing, right? Just something, like, like a, a priced thing in our possession that means something to us because of our childhood or something to, or, or, or maybe uh, connected to a, a spouse or a significant other uh, that wouldn't mean anything to anybody else that would bring zero dollars on eBay but that I would lose sleep for a week straight if I lost it. it it's that thing but it would have to be a thing that they don't currently have that they lost or never thought they'd see again mm-hmm. so I can't I can't I can't give you a specific thing it'd be different with each individual person but that's my answer yeah Wow, great answer. Look at that. He's all zany and loopy because it's two hours in, but he's still giving out great answers. He's such a professional, that Captain Logan. Well, I had to make up for uh, the hyena laughing. Um, all right, let's go to his next one. He, he clarified in another super chat, what I meant to say was, what do you give for the man who has everything, i.e. Superman? So specifically Superman? Yeah, I think uh, I think we answered it, though. Yeah, I only brought it up because he put it. He, I just wanted to read it because he did. He did or, or do you mean, do, do I have to specifically say what do you give to Superman? Because uh, Superman doesn't actually literally have everything. Like, no, he's I get, kind of broke. I get he's the just title a and everything. And, uh, like, um, some of that is probably, like, Fortress of Solitude. You know what I mean? Where, like, all the, all the, all the crazy alien stuff in the Fortress of Solitude that yeah. nobody else has. But, like, if I had to give Superman a present... Uh, I don't know. I'd go back in time and give him his parents back. <laughs> uh, like I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe his planet back. Sorry, his, 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 his entire planet. race. It's, 
kind he of doesn't have any. He's lost everything. What do you mean? That's sort of what I mean. He's got Candor. <laughs> True. It's got the bottle of city. I'd, I'd figure out a way to bring back the bottle of city of of, Cam, of Candor. Um, wow, that's quite a gift. Yeah, that's like that's like a couple of years worth. But of things like I was gifts. actually capable of giving a Superman, I don't know. I uh, I would, I would write better Smallville, and then I would give him those scripts. You got a pretty sweet uh, black bathrobe you could give him. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I have like. <laughs> Remember these days, Superman. You paraphernalia you know um i would get a a a cool superman tattoo and then tell him about it uh no i don't don't know i don't know what i would do you that's worse than people who are like hey i planted a tree uh as a gift for your birthday (laughs) i got a tattoo yeah of you for for your birthday on myself for your birthday yeah lots of love (laughs) yeah might as well have spent 55 dollars and named a star after me (laughs) yeah Give me a lake on the moon or something. I thought about doing that for DJ. <laughs> Name a DJ star. <laughs> I've not thought about that. Oh, thank goodness. That's just... I don't want to feign excitement when that comes in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, it's been on camera, so it has to happen. That's the rules. Oh, that's so good. Okay, we've got to wrap things up here. Yeah, I am fading. Uh, we got, uh, oh, so I'm sorry, DJ. Ties. My apologies, man. No, no worries. By the way, guys, I should have said this this. earlier, but no After Dark tonight because I'm I'm, I'm too busy with uh, a writer's meeting I've got to finish preparing for for tomorrow. Uh, We will bring it back next Thursday night if everything goes according to plan. Uh, So if patrons were hoping for After Dark, uh, and that's partly why I'm letting this go longer tonight, uh, we will will be, uh, which I shouldn't do because i got to work, but uh, I said last call for Super Chats and then we got a few in, so anyway, um, I should never say five or ten minutes. Anyway, uh, but yeah, After Dark next week. Tell your friends. Anyway. Yeah, no, I was actually planning to shoot a little bit after this myself because I started last night taking all my movies down, if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, because I started doing my entire collection video, which I stayed up till one o'clock last night and I only got through the white section. So uh, it's going to take a while. So I have, to, I, have to, I have to film again tonight. Uh, but Connor Nielsen, 999. Oh, thanks, which, buddy. Which film have you purchased more than any other? Are you sick of buying it? Do you wonder where you'll store your VHS, Betamax, Laserdisc, DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K copies? Uh, yeah, so, so that's interesting. Um, I typically, with movies, I don't have not I kept old copies of things uh, because I was never a movie collector in the way that you guys are. Um, I don't even do that. Yeah, I mean, like... But what I mean is, I, it was always just a matter of um, having... Well, I, I mean, I guess maybe I am more like you in that, you know, if I if I traded up for a cooler version of it, I didn't feel like having the older one. Um, mm-hmm. There is going to eventually be one exception to that. And I say eventually because I haven't really started working on this yet. The, the movie that I own the most is Batman 89, which is mm-hmm. going to shock everybody I know. <laughs> and I have kept... Uh, some versions of that just because of, like, nostalgia factor and stuff. So I have the same VHS I had all the way back in... Wow, that's cool. 89, 90, whatever, if we had a VHS player back then and we got it it, when it came out. I'm not even sure. But I have the same... The boxes beat up. Like, I have the same copy I had back then. I also have my old Ninja Turtles tape from them, too. uh, The 1990 movie. black and green cover. And I think I still have all of my uh, cartoon episodes uh, from then, too, from from the Turtle Show, including the ones that we got from Pizza Hut. Wow, I left all that stuff at my parents' house. Uh... I, I, yeah, I don't have any VHS tapes these days, but Cap, Cap actually has to own as many copies as he's done commentaries on that film because little known fact, he watches a different version every time he does a commentary on it. That's not true. Uh, that's a great idea. But um, <laughs> so a couple things about this. It's really interesting, Connor, that you thought to mention this today uh, because there's developments about this. So uh, Ooh, I own sorry. Batman 89 on VHS. I do own it on Betamax, believe it or not. Brandon found me one a few years ago. It's in here somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I've got one. And uh, I have it on DVD and Blu-ray. And thanks to Connor for the Blu-ray version because he gave me the same... uh, He was liquidating some of his stuff at one point, and he gave me a a bunch of his old movies. And one of the... He he somehow got them on the airplane, and he brought them to me. And uh, one of the things he brought was uh, the same collection of the four 90s Batman movies that I have, but in Blu-ray form. So... I have both of them on the oh. shelf right now, and the DVD set is like this, and the Blu-ray set is like this. Um, but I am... 89 is the only movie that I'm planning on collecting 
as close to every release of as possible because I think that collection is hilarious because it's been released so many times, but also because there's some really pretty covers, um, particularly that white one that they did for, for those four movies a few years back. I want that one, but I'm not going to get it for all those movies, just 89. Um, but also, I don't have this, uh, this version of 89 yet, but Adam from our old Star Trek club recently gifted me with a laser disc player and i haven't plugged it in yet and tried to uh, use it because i don't have any laser discs and brandon's going to bring over some of his and we're going to mess around with that uh sometime in the next uh, couple of weeks uh but i have a laser disc player now and uh, that's even more fuel for my fire to finally get the 89 laser disc and wow. uh, so yeah i'm going to go on ebay at some point uh maybe around maybe just after christmas maybe that's when i'll splurge and uh, i'm going to go I, i'm going to throw in a bunch of uh, versions of that in a shopping cart and spend you know hundred couple hundred dollars and get every version i can get my hands on all at once of batman 89 i can't wait for those packages to come in the mail uh but you, yes. need the, you need to get the diamond lux edition because it it looks really yeah, cool that one's really cool looking i've looked into this and i've priced it out uh and most of it um I can get for around, I think, I think it was like around 150 bucks. I could get pretty much everything. And then the question ends up being like, do I want to get some of the European releases? Cause there's some really cool covers and things there that we didn't get. Yeah. Those ones that just came out, I think that was the Nolan stuff though, but those ones that just came out in the UK were really cool. Those 4k versions. Uh, anyway, we, we, we have gotten to finish here. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, next up is uh, bag studios. It's, it's the like last, last one. Super chat. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and then, Mr. Cool, you said you were done. <laughs> oh, God, he sent me something with, with Affleck. Uh oh. Mr. Cool. Yeah. Mr. Oh, cool, God, check then. Messenger for an Affleck surprise. Did he Photoshop something? Uh, did he make a meme I'm, out of what you said? I'm about to find out. Oh, yeah, he sure did. Here, I'll pull this up. I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up. Rack him up, rack him up, rack him up. Uh, real quick, I guess I'll talk about Connor's comments since you're doing do that. I, I don't do that anymore. When I first started collecting... Oh, there it is! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like okay. him. He's not even looking at him! Yeah, he's just standing <laughs> off in, in the middle distance. That's that's beautiful, Ben. Thanks, thanks so very much. Do you see? That was so quick. So quick with the Photoshop. You should be making the, the thumbnails, Ben. Where you been? My, where you been, Ben? My, my apologies. Uh, to anyone that was offended by that joke. Okay, anyway. So the last one is from Bag Studios, and he says, Cap, what is yeah. that shirt, and why is it awesome? Uh, I wear this a lot. It's one of my favorite shirts. This was a uh, T Fury find from a few years ago, and this is a mashup shirt of uh, Power Rangers and Infinity Gauntlet. It's the Morfinity Gauntlet. Here, I'll try to, I'll try to make. Hang on. Let me see if I can get the scene here where I can go to just myself yeah there i am uh look morfinity gauntlet and so it's uh is lord zed as thanos uh with the infinity gauntlet and then uh if you go back and look at the first cover uh you can see all the different uh characters that we've switched with power rangers characters uh wow you, you can see my unfinished ceiling even. oh look at that was yeah. that mahogany sure i don't know uh, it looks like pine. Uh, so bag Studios. What, what did he ask? Oh yeah, yeah. It's when, pine. When are you gonna get the uh, the Morbin time mashup with the uh, Morbius and Power Rangers T-shirt? Oh, is that a thing? Of course, that's a thing. I, I hope so. I'm not a big meme guy. <laughs> so unless if, unless it's on a shirt before it's, it's, a, a, before if it's, it's a, a I'm not a big popular meme guy. <laughs> So, like, if I got, you know, if for some reason something like this really caught on and it was everywhere, but I bought the shirt first, I'll still probably wear it. No, you got to like the, the whole Morbin time thing. Yeah, I'm not wearing that. I don't want to do that. Cap is all about quality with his t-shirts. Um, and his memes. Yeah. You just call me Captain Zaslov. <laughs> don't call me that. I will from now on. Don't do it, DJ. You got a 10-year YouTube plan. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, we are at almost two and a half hours. We've got to get going. Um, okay, so we did not hit the $100 goal, but we did get the 65 and we had a few guys that worked really hard at trying to get us there. So um, I am not going to promise the 24-hour stream for the end of the month, but 
uh, without doing another one of these, because you guys uh, were really trying to uh, help us get there, and I had such a fun show here, uh, I will promise it for next month. Uh, oh, so, kept such softy. So we, we, we will definitely do a 24-hour stream uh, sometime next month, uh, maybe earlier, maybe later. It just depends on what weekends I've got. Uh, so I've got a really busy uh, rest of this month. I'm going to not uh, shoehorn it in that last weekend since we didn't quite get this goal, but but we will do it in October. Uh, so, and I, again, I'm not sure totally yet what it's going to be, um, and I might let one of you guys help us pick it. But uh, yeah, so we'll do that in October now. And thanks, everybody, so much for watching. I hope you had fun with tonight's edition of The Cat Logan Show. Uh, D23 is this weekend. Disney's going to announce a bunch of stuff, I'm sure. So Tuesday almost certainly will be uh, devoted to announcements for Disney. <laughs> And uh, we th thanks, Vitaly. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, and and then uh, tomorrow night, Austin and I are gonna be uh, doing a watch party. This will be a lot of fun, I'm sure. On one of Austin's legitimately favorite movies, uh, the original Pirates of the Caribbean, which I've not oh. seen in years. And because I'm so busy uh, for tomorrow's show and stuff, and, and um, it's gonna be even harder now because I let the show go too long um i'm not gonna have time to watch it again so that's gonna be a semi-blind commentary for me because i haven't seen it in a lot of years so you'll so you'll get my uh in the moment reaction to that movie for the first time i've seen it in probably i don't know man 10 years at least but it could be more like 15 i mean i haven't seen that in a really long time but austin knows it really well so we'll have the contrast of his actually talking about the movie and me going hey i sort of remember that and just constantly probably think seeing the theme song because i don't remember that so a lot of that movie will just be impossible going, to forget a lot of that movie will just be me going -na -na -dun 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 -dun. and i have some amusing stories uh, about a couple of things with that so oh, so that's what we're gonna pop it 10 o'clock central time that's cool. uh, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. I don't even know how I'm watching it yet. I get those are probably on Disney Plus, right? I've got it. I'll ship it to you. Don't worry. Uh, Over, okay. I'll overnight it. Wow, he, this guy's Amazon Prime in it. <laughs> yeah, we. I got drones now. <laughs> it's got. It's really ominous when a person says, "I've got drones," until you remember what year it is. I've got drones. Oh, those kind of drones. I thought you were like a queen bee or something. <laughs> anyway. I don't know what I'm talking about. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you again, uh, some of you, hopefully tomorrow night, and then DJ and I will be back on Tuesday. We'll see you later. I was Captain Logan. This was DJ Martinez. Oh, that would have been good. Dang it. Can't get it to work. I'm not Joker. I, I was trying to figure out what you were trying to make work. Anyway, bye, bye everybody.